to MotoGP and the feeder series to the British Talent Cup and Red Bull Rookies. This is Fab Racing Mini Bikes British Championship. Hello and welcome to the opening round of the 2024 Fab Racing British Mini Bike Championship. You join us here at the southernmost part of England in Kent and we are looking forward to a great weekend's worth of racing. We are not too far away from the first race of the season. But for a start, let's go around the paddock and speak to some of the riders ahead of 2024. And here we have another talented young rider. Why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? I'm Mason. And what are you racing this weekend, Mason? I'm racing in the Pros, Elites and Metro Kits. Awesome stuff. And I mean, coming into this season, what are you most looking forward to? What's your aspiration? What, what, what dream result are you going to get this year? I really hope to um, win the championship and get lots of wins. Awesome stuff. And uh, obviously, I, I mean, everyone starts somewhere, right? Everyone's got someone to look up to. Who's your racing hero? Um, Mark Marquez. Good choice, obviously. Uh, and, uh, of course, do you one day hope to be in his shoes? Do you one day hope to be at the pinnacle of uh, bike racing? Yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, best of luck for the weekend. We hope to uh, see you on the top step. Well, there's many young riders here in Fab Racing, and we have one of the finest examples of them here. Why don't you introduce yourselves to our audience at home and let them know all about you? I'm Taylor. Um, I'm Taylor Tomlinson. I'm racing in the 50s, Metricit 50s. And I've won two championships in the pros and the, and the, in the, pros and the rookies. Why don't we talk about that, Taylor? Um, you've had a fantastic few years at Fab Racing. You've made the jump up to the Mini GP 50s. Uh, you know. Yeah, definitely. And how are you feeling looking forward into 2024? When we're here at Lid for the first round of the year, it's lovely and sunny at the moment. It's a track a lot of the riders enjoy. You looking for some strong results here? Yeah, I'm calling in. Well, yesterday in free practice, I was third, so. I'm going to be near the podium this year, so. We'll have to see how you run. Well, so how was your off-season going? Uh, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a long, cold winter. A lot of people like to uh, make the trip down to Spain for some uh, time on the bike. What, did, uh, what happened over in the Tomlinson camp? Uh, we went to Danny Webb uh, GP camp in Spain. We went to two kingdoms with Danny Webb. And we went to Lyndon Hill, but that was a part of Yes, So, yeah. And, uh... We know a lot of riders here are part of the Danny Webb GP camp. You know, what, what's it like to be part of that? What, what kind of help do you get from Danny Webb and the team over there? And, you know, is it good to see him helping out young British riders and helping everyone improve? Uh, he helps. He helps, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. That's great to hear. Thank you very much, Taylor Tomlinson. Best of luck for this weekend at Lid and for 2024. Thank you. So we're here with Archie Hooper, back for another year in 2024. Archie, why don't you tell everyone watching along at home how 2023 went for you and what your plans are this year? Uh, 2023 wasn't the best on the Mini Moto. Uh, I didn't think it really suited my style. So we've gone to the Metric at 50 this season, and I've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of improvement, and uh, it definitely suits my riding style a bit better. And we keep improving on the track. That's great to hear. Obviously, jumping from the Mini Moto onto the Metro Kit Mini GP50, it's a bit of a jump, much bigger bike. Obviously, you've got gear, it's a lot faster as well, but is that something that you enjoy? You said, you know, you were enjoy you, were, you felt you were improving on the bike more. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it a lot more, and I think uh, the gears and everything like that uh, works best for me. Um, and like I say, with the riding style, it's much better, and I'm still getting used to it. So what's your plans then for 2024? Here at the first weekend in Lid, you now obviously it's the first round, it's, you know, kind of testing the waters and see where everyone is, but are you just aiming to go out there, be fast, win some races? Uh, yeah, we're looking for improvement each time, like trying to knock off some time, and hopefully the season will try and be more up the leaderboard. That's brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Archie. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. And on to another very young, talented rider here today. Why don't you introduce yourself for the camera? My name's Freddie, and I race... Keys. Awesome stuff, Freddie. And I mean, is this your first season in bike racing? No. How, how did last year go? Was it a good result? In the top 15, so it's good. Are you looking to improve on that this year, get some podiums, get some wins? Yeah. Awesome stuff. And I mean, talk about, obviously, your racing career. Where do you hope to be in the future when you're a little bit bigger? Do you hope to be uh, on bigger bikes, faster bikes? Where do you want to get to? GP. And who's your inspiration to get there? Marquez. Good choice. Well, best of luck for the weekend, Freddie. Uh, of course, nice to meet you, and well, we hope to see you on the top step. Thank you. 
We are here with Joey Athasic in his first year in fab racing in 2024. Joey, it's great to have you join us here in the paddock. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what got you into motorbike racing and what you're looking forward to doing here this weekend? Uh, the main thing was well, I just got into doing that bike and just watching the MotoGP and all sorts. That's great to hear. Have you got anyone in MotoGP that you, you know, would you say is a hero of yours? Someone like Mark Marquez, someone like that? Yeah, Mark Marquez, mainly one of my heroes. I just want to mainly, when I grow up, just be like him. Well, that's great to hear. It's your first weekend uh, here at Fab. Um, and the first weekend racing on the bike as well. What's your plan for this weekend? Is it just kind of go out and have some fun? Or, you know, are you ready to go out and start winning races? Uh, I'm ready to, like, hopefully in the top ten. Um, and I'm just um, just wanting to have fun on the bike, mainly. And what's your favourite thing about riding motorbike? Is it, you know, the adrenaline rush? Is it the racing itself? Mainly just the racing and stuff, because I, I just like to ride the bike and stuff. That's brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Joey, and best of luck for your first season in fab racing. Thank you. We're here with Beth Ashby, one of our many young, talented female riders here at Fab Racing. Beth, it's been a long, long winter, but we're back here at Fab at Lid in 2024. How are you feeling? Looking forward to the first round of the week of the season. Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm still trying to get used to the 70, but I think it's going well for my first time on the 70 in a while. And uh, why don't you talk us through your 70 bike? I mean, we can just see it here in the, uh, in the back of the shot. I mean, these things are fast, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. What's your, what do you say is the kind of the difference between the 70 and the 50? And even, you know, obviously it's a big difference between them and the Mini Moto, but it's the steps you've got to take to work your out the motorcycle racing ladder. What's the difference between the classes? What does it take to, you know, be at the top level here in Fab? Well, I guess um, it's hard to get used to from going from the 50 to the 70 because how much more power it has. And you have to make sure that, I don't know, you sort of like don't let the back spin out too much on you. Looking forward then into 2024, as you said, you know, you're on the 70, what's your plan? You're going to go out, be fast, get on podiums and races, or, you know, is this more about just kind of first round, seeing where you stand, have a bit of fun out on circuit as well, and kind of shake off that winter rust? Well, I'm trying to improve all the time because it's like my third time riding this 70, and I'm just trying to get used to it and have fun at the same time. So, yeah. That's brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Beth, and best of luck in 2024. Thank you. So we're here with Annabelle, another one of the talented female up-and-coming riders here at Fab Race. And why don't you start by just introducing yourself, what you're riding and how you're looking forward to getting on this weekend. Um, I'm Annabelle McCarthy. I'm riding a FIM 192 Ovali. I'm in the Extreme 200s and I'm just here for a bit of practice, really. So, uh, I mean, are you new to bike racing? Is this your first season on this type of bike? It's the first season on this type of bike, but I did do a little bit of practice last yeah, at Three Sisters on a 190 Bucci. Yeah. So what is the, the biggest difference? I mean, for a lot of people at home, it's just two wheels and some handlebars. I mean, how are they different to, to ride? I mean, is there anything drastic you have to do uh, around the track, racing lines, braking, anything like that setup-wise? Is there a huge difference? Uh, compared to the two-stroke, there is a bit of a difference, really, because it's more, got more grunt coming out corners, down the straights, whereas the two-strokes, you've got to change up a lot of gears. This bike's a bit lazy, to be honest. So, of course, uh, power, I suppose, is a bit important here at uh, Lid Car Circuit. You've got a lot of top-end speed. Are you confident you're going to be all right down the straights? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I mean, you, you said this weekend's a bit of a practice session for you. I mean, we've got a long season ahead going to a, uh, plenty of different car circuits around the country. I mean, uh, what are you most looking forward to? Are you looking to, to get anything specific out of this season, or is it literally just the whole season to try and test this bike? Um, the whole season, basically, try and test this bike, because I am in the B&B, like, doing the FIM stuff and that and I'm just going to come here to see if I can get anywhere near the top three really. Well best of luck to you for uh, well, this, the, the rest of the weekend, the rest of the season we hope to see you taking some good results. Well, we are just in front of some of the Pit Bike 140 riders. They're just about to head out onto the circuit. And much of their complaints, we're going to run in and see if we can grab a quick word with some of them. We'll start with, we'll start with Jamie King first. Jamie, welcome back 2024. How are you feeling? Uh, mega, yeah, great to be back. It's finally nice to be at Lid for the first round for a change. And it'd be lovely sunshine because it's normally horrible and maybe even snow. So, yeah, it's really good to be back. Um, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good season this season. So, hopefully back on the top set would be nice. 
Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what you can do, but obviously we've all got our fingers crossed you. Uh, just run us through, you know, what you've done on the winter. Obviously, we've been all following you on Pit Bike Sonic on the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you've been vlogging about what you've been doing with the bike. Anyone who's not caught it, what's the deal with the number 76 this year? Uh, so we went to Spain in the winter. Obviously, had a really good time there, on and off the track. Um, so, yeah, and we're done. We've been to some new tracks over the over the winter as well and had a play about, but, yeah, just hopefully to get back on the soft step this season, really. And obviously, we've got Chris here with the number one plate this weekend, so we'll be out to try and beat him this weekend. That's brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Jamie. <laughs> I've just had a rag thrown at me, but as that happens, we are going to try and grab the reigning champion, Chris Wells. Chris, uh, could obviously, you were just about to head up. We'll try and grab you quickly. You know, coming into this year's reigning champion, spirit's got to be high here at Lid. We've got to be high, yeah. Yeah, just here for a bit of fun this year. See a uh, couple of rounds. Yeah, not much to say. <laughs> So is it kind of show up, show them all how it's done and then kind of go and relax at home for a few rounds? Is that your objective in 2024? I'll say I've completed it, haven't I? So uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no need to come back and do them all. So uh, got to give Jay a chance and uh, yeah, just here to have fun. Well, you know, Jamie was just saying, you know, you are the objective. And if you're not here, you know, every weekend, are you still going to aim to be the objective this weekend? You're still going to aim to win three races? Got to win to, uh, all three, yeah. Got to upset him, haven't I? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Thanks so much, Chris. Talk to Thank us. Thank you. Cheers. Well then, that was uh, some pit bike riders as they were heading out. We'll see if we can try and grab anybody else as they come through. But looks like they're all making their way out to the circuit. Make sure that you tune in a little bit later for some pit bike 140 action. Sebastian Gozlowski, 2024, lies ahead of us here. You've had a few great years in fab racing. What does this year have in store for us from you? Um, hopefully I'm going to get in top three in the championship. So... We better get luck. And uh, talking of championships, obviously you've spent the last couple of years on the mini motos, but as we can see behind us here, you've uh, made a bit of a big step up. Why don't you talk us through, you know, that number 64 bike? You know, what's it like riding the uh, the bigger geared machines? Um, it's faster, um, more. You can flick it around more, and it's it has gears, and that's fun. I feel like we get a uh, lot of the same response from a lot of people. The gear bikes, very fast, very fun. As I said, though, 2024, you're hoping to be in the top three in the championship, but it's the first round here at Lid. It's a track that we know you like. You've had some strong results here in the past. You're looking to, you know, go out and achieve some strong positions today, or is it more just uh, head out first round of the year, see where things are, see how you go? Um, I, so yesterday I was getting quite bad. Like, not that well, but today I've talked through where I can make a difference and hopefully that will get me far at this round. Well, that's brilliant stuff. It was great to speak to you, Sebastian. Thank you very much and best of luck for here and for the rest of 2024. Thank you. Moving our way down the paddock still, and there are a variety of ages. They start as young, uh, as sort of eight years old, move all the way up into adult ages. Here they are right at the beginning of their journey. Do you want to start with sort of just your name and what you're racing? My name's Tommy and I'm racing in the Rookies. My name's Tyler, I'm racing in the Rookies. So two competitors out on the circuit. I mean, what's that rivalry like? Who's going to be the quicker one of the two of you? Uh, I don't know, but I think it's going to be me. Uh, I feel like it's him. Oh. Well, we've got a humble one, I suppose. So, uh, I mean, for, for you, I mean, are you looking to, to try and catch him over the weekend? How far off your, his pace are you? I mean, you might get lucky. You might be able to go and nab him for a couple of positions. Um, yeah, at the moment, I'm last on the grid, but um, in Q2, I'm going to try my hardest to get up the grid a little bit more. It's all a learning curve. Very, very young rider and still looking to uh, to improve. Uh, for both of you, I mean, of course, you're very, very young. You've got a long way to go in your racing career. Where are you hoping to eventually end up? Uh, come up in the top six. Uh, top ten. And who's that hero, that main driving force that's motivating you to sort of do well out on track? Who do you one day want to be? Uh, like Tommy Bridewell. Um... O'Halloran. Well, best of luck to you both, of course. I'm sure you'll do fantastic out on circuit. It'll be interesting to see which one of you comes out on top. Best of luck, boys. Thank you. Two legends of the Fab Racing at Paddock. Then why don't you start off just introducing yourself and maybe some of your accomplishments as well. You've got quite a few. Uh, I'm Michael Holt and um, I rode here last year on the MKGB 70 and the MKGB 50. Um, I won the 70s by... Uh, by a close close race at Three Sisters and then the 50s um, 
we ended the championship off ended the championship off at um, uh, Wilton Mill Awesome stuff. And what are you looking to get out of 2024? I mean, you can't exactly do better than last year, but you're looking to replicate that success? To be honest, we're only here for practice, really. But out in Spain and in BNB, we're hoping to win both championships and see where we can go from there. Yeah, looking, uh, obviously, at your career and looking at how you'll progress. And, I mean, one day, where do you hope to end up? Uh, MotoGP champion. Hopefully, I mean that's the dream, isn't it? Right. Uh, I mean, so here to learn, here for some experience. I mean, you drove uh, road really well here at Lid last year. So, you going to win? Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, hope so. We'll find out. Well, best of luck to you, uh, and uh, well, best of luck for the rest of your racing career as well. Thank you very much. On the road to MotoGP and the feeder series to the British Talent Cup and Red Bull Rookies, this is Fab Racing Mini Bikes British Championship. Well, it has been a long few months, a winter of desperation and destitution. But finally, in 2024, the Fab Racing Mini Bikes British Championship makes its triumphant return. You join myself, Ross McIntyre, and alongside me, Zach Sweeney, in the commentary box. And we are here today at the southernmost part of Kent at the Lid Kart Racing Circuit. What a place to be. What a track to come to. But, Zach, welcome along. It is great to be here with you. It's great to be back in Fab Racing. How are you feeling coming into this one? Yeah, absolutely uh, fantastic. A little bit out of my comfort zone. Two wheels as opposed to four. But watching uh, along over the practice sessions and into to qualifying these things are quick so many up and coming riders so much talent here on these grids i think we're in good, uh, for a good couple of days of racing we absolutely should be of course many many races to come our way today all of your normal fab classes we're just about to get underway with the final few qualifying sessions of the weekend and then all of the race ones to come your way this afternoon and of course we have race twos and race threes tomorrow ac40 pros will be the first race of the day and the first race of the season make sure to let us know where you are watching from around the world who you are supporting here at fab racing it is great to be bringing you all of the coverage and fantastic to be here at the lid card circuit a circuit that's been around since 1993 been a long old time and it's been a great time and uh well as we're looking forward to all the racing action today of course we've got some mini moto action we've got mini gp we've got pit bike action and there's one interesting one we have to mention zach is that we've got some mini f1 psycho action but of course the big issue with the Mini F1 sidecars, the reigning champion of many, many years, Mick Williams, a no-show this weekend. So, suddenly, the most dominant man in psycho, well, in mini psycho racing in the British Isles is not here at the opening round of the season. We're expecting him to be back, but this leads to a world of possibilities. Suddenly, there's going to be a lot of teams out there thinking that coming into the first round of the season, they could be picking up some very very strong points absolutely uh, of course mick williams uh, last year we had the double round here at lid he won all six races uh, he then did the triple at red lodge for round three so the first nine races of this season were dominated by that sidecar so coming into 2024 him not being here effectively just removes the, the leader essentially and bumps everyone up a place and the competition from second downwards is absolutely sensational particularly uh, opening the door for the green streets because they were able to take some really good com uh, competition to, uh, to, to to Mick Williams at the back end of 2023 so they're going to be looking to be well taken to the top step and filling those shoes very quickly they will indeed we'll have to wait and see what is going to befall us here at the opening round of the 2024 fab racing mini bikes british championship season opening of course here in the southernmost part of kent the lid kart racing circuit a fantastic fantastic track beloved by riders known as the silverstone of karting just from its high speed nature it is so so fast around here as i said earlier been around since 1993 1040 meters just over a comet here on the outer circuit we also use part of the junior circuit as well for the mini moto so you will see two different layouts being used today that is slightly longer just over 1300 
100 meters but it's always great racing around here and it's always great racing as well and fab again if this is your first time watching fab racing if this is your first time watching mini uh, mini bikes you're not really familiar with what's going on well fab racing we are part of the dawner road to moto gp program we've been partnered with the Bennis british superbike championship before and we are widely recognized as the gateway into the british talent cup the rng british talent cup the next step uh, for young riders in their motorcycle career is there we can see the moto team guys heading out for their first qualifying session on the subject of the british talent cup over 90 percent of the 2019 british talent cup grid all came from fab racing and from 2019 to the present the top two in the championship standings at the end of every year have all come from fab racing this is the place to be if you want to start a career in motorcycle racing if you want to go on a journey and of course if you're watching at home and you fancy getting involved or you've got a young one who maybe wants to hop on two wheels then of course head over to the website you can find out how to join in as well but of course there's senior classes as well there is plenty of places for anyone to come and have some fun and more recently avali riders as well if you've got an avali uh, mini gp bike you are now more than welcome to come around fam as well with some regulation changes those bikes are now allowed which is absolutely great to see but the moto team guys just heading out onto the circuit now for their second qualifying session and this sack is probably the strangest championship that we have here in, uh, in fab racing of course there's two different classes which you have to keep an eye on but of course it's all about the team and not about the rider so you can have a different rider on the bike every single race but it doesn't matter you're still picking up the points at the end of the day well yeah exactly that uh, and that well funnily enough is uh, exactly what wins you championships getting those results and, and that's the focus of the teams is maximizing their opportunities at different circuits so when it comes to obviously the, the, the other classes where it is just the, the one rider for the, the whole season on that particular bike, these guys can chop and change. So sometimes they might have a, a rider who's a little bit quicker in quali. So maybe that's their focus for the weekend, getting themselves at a good uh, start position. Because of course, the way qualifying works for Fab Racing, we've got three races, two qualifying sessions. Of those two qualifying sessions, the quickest lap across both, so they get two opportunities essentially to, to, to set their lap as such. They then set the grid for all all three races so the qualifying order is used for race one race two and race three so a good qualifying is absolutely imperative uh, to storing uh, some some really good points uh, and then obviously into the races if a particular team has a rider that's very very strong consistently a good racer they can then put them on the bike and maximize the points for the bike they can indeed if you are just joining us hello and welcome to the opening round of the 2024 fab racing mini bikes british championship season do not worry you've not missed any of the racing action yet we are just finishing off our final qualifying sessions of the weekend this is qualifying two for the moto team class three more qualifying sessions to come after this and we've got all of our race ones to look forward to later on today sean whittaker in the standard class currently sitting at the uh, at the top of the timing sheets in this session of 47.779 for Whitaker, the only rider into the 47s. Looks to be only one open class rider out there today, or at the moment anyway. That is the number 231 uh, team Kieran Evans, presumably Evans. Uh, is making their way out onto the circuit but it's great to be here back at fab racing as always it's looking to be a very very strong 2024 as well we've got a great big calendar to look forward to seven rounds one double round uh, up in Rara in Cumbria after this one here at Lid of course we are heading to Ella Park in Suffolk on the 24th to the 26th of May and then for round three we're heading to Three Sisters where we had our championship finale last year uh, that fantastic circuit on the outskirts of Wigan they'll be heading there in the middle of June and then of course our double round rounds four and five at Rara then it's Clay Pigeon for round six a track we haven't been to in a very very long time very historic circuit there and then ending off the season once again we'll be heading to Ella Park uh, at the start of September to round out our year and then of course we do of course have the uh, the Lord of Lydon uh, mini GP events at the end of the year as well which many of our mini GP riders will be attending with seven minutes left in this qualifying session Zach we now have another open bike out on the uh, on the track as well it's none other than Will Howe from the 96 who a few years ago made the entirety of this class look like a hobby he was so far Ed. He hasn't set a lap time at the moment. Sean Whitaker sits at the top of the table in the standard class. Yeah, by a fairly uh, healthy margin, uh, uh, of course, ahead of the team uh, Acma Racing. I mean, well, I say healthy. 
it's a margin at that 18 thousandths <laughs> of a second. Uh, so very, very nip and tuck stuff. But back from that, uh, of course, to, to Ben O'Keefe, Harrison O'Keefe as well. They've got a fairly sizable gap. Uh, Will Howarth, of course, you were talking about on that 96 machine, moves his way up into P3 on his first lap alone. Still six minutes left to go in the session. That's going to translate to a good six, seven flying laps. He could be good for pole. He could be indeed. Again, although the uh, guys are out there racing on the track at the same time, the qualifying the same track at the same time, uh, they do line up on the grid you know, as they qualify, but they are in two different classes. So the results of the race, you know, if you finish third on the podium and you're the first rider in the open class, for example, you do pick up the points uh, as if you had won uh, overall. So it's a little bit to wrap your head around, but still, nonetheless, it is enjoyable. Of course, last year, Moto Team, a very, very enjoyable season. We had some great fights all the way. Team Acme Racing taking home, as, a, as I say that, well, how it does shoot straight to the top of the table by, a, uh, well, it's a tenth of a second. Yeah, that's a massive, massive gap there. But yeah, great stuff there from Will Howarth on the number 96 who didn't really uh, do as many Moto Team rounds last year. Only finished fourth in the open standings. Team Acme Racing, of course, take the championship there with Team Pinky in the Brain. They took the championship in the standard class last year. Again, lots of different classes to keep your eyes on. Keep your eyes on the O'Keefe's as well. The O'Keefe boys, we've got Ben and P4, Harris and P5 and Gary and P7 at the moment. Those guys became firm fan favorites last year. They turned up, not really knowing what they were doing their first time racing bikes and they've absolute, absolutely fallen in love with it with 4 minutes and 55 seconds left on the timing sheets you see more and more riders making their way to the circus looks like 9 is the amount we've got out on track at the moment another great lap time there from Will Howarth on that last effort a 46.622 puts him 3 quarters of a second ahead of Sean Whitaker in P2 I mean he dominated the motor team before, he took a step back last year, looks like he wants to kick off 2024 and, you know, put his cars down on the table, show what his plans are this year. Yeah, he's uh, showing his arsenal very, very early. I mean, we're talking about... Oh, oh well, as I say that, he's gone down. That is Will Howarth. Yeah, that, that is... Uh, it looks like Will Howarth anyway who's gone down. I believe that is the number 96. Big issue down at the bottom end of the circuit. And indeed is is i believe it is we'll have to get it confirmed but a big issue for someone down the bottom end of the circuit nonetheless and uh, indeed the number 96 of will Howth has had a big big off bike looks to be okay but i'm not sure he's gonna be continuing in this session that is coming down out of the bottom end of the circuit from the big hairpin uh, down at turn number three uh, so that looks to be on the exit of the corner hoping that everything is okay for will Howth. we can see that the uh, official photographer of Fab Racing, Dale Baldwin, helping out there, uh, making sure everything's all right. Of course, Dale does a great job taking photos for the whole championship, and you know, make sure you go and follow him on social media. He does a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, but also, you know, just willing to help hand as well. He's a friendly face around here at the paddock. He's uh, well-liked, well-known. A great team helping out. But yeah, Will Howth looks like he's not going to be taking part anymore in this session. Not a complete disaster there, Zach, uh, because, you know, he is currently seven tenths ahead of everybody else and in the open class as well. His only competitor in the open class at the moment uh, hasn't set a lap time yet, uh, Kieran Evans. So as, uh, there's someone else that's having issues as well with a chain off there, it would appear. But yeah, we'll have not a massive disaster come off there, presuming the bike isn't damaged. Yeah, uh, exactly. That is going to be the hope. Uh, that's the 231, of course. That's the other motor team open uh, bike. Uh, of course, probably will explain as to why Kieran Evans hasn't been able to set a lap time, pulled over at the side of the circuit. With less than three minutes on the clock, it's going to be very difficult for him to put in a competitive lap time. But it should be absolutely sensational uh, because now Will Howarth isn't on the circuit. Seven tenths, a big gap to close but if Howarth can do it no reason why no one else can absolutely I mean again we're still looking at different classes though so although Will Howarth you know if it ends like this and that's the fastest lap across the two sessions he will be going from the pole position he's not going to be fighting with the likes of Sean Whitaker and Team Acme Racing for you know points paying positions I mean they'll still be fighting anyway because this is fab racing they're just going to go and have some fun and race with their mates even if they're in two different classes but in terms of purely points these guys are not in the same race uh, so you know, Kieran Evans off of P9, if he's not able to sort that bike out, not able to complete the lap, Will Howard going off of P1. I think the open class is looking pretty much, well, it's going to be an ask for Kieran Evans, shall we say, to try and make some leeway on Will Howard, presuming that there's nothing goes wrong again for the number 96. 
But with one minute and 40 seconds left to go in this session, will there be any changes in the timing sheets again? We will have to get the qualifying results confirmed for you after this session. Uh, it is the best lap time from two qualifying sessions determines your grid position. As we can see, that there is the number 119 team. Ernie the Badger had a pretty strong showing last season. As, uh, well, the team names, again, just a reminder, uh, it's all about the bike in Motor Team. It is not about the rider. And uh, hence, this year, or well, last year even, it was uh, the regulations were changed. Instead of being whoever owns the bike and their name was just stuck there, which made it very confusing for us in the commentary box because you could be talking about someone with someone completely different on the bike. Nowadays, you can have a team name. Most riders, you know, if they're not really going to be sharing the bike, they do tend to just put their own name as the team name. So, you know, Will Howarth is technically Team Will Howarth, but we're going to call them Will Howarth. But you know, you've got teams like Team Ernie the Badger, Team Acme Racing, um, and those guys, look at, uh, you know, Team Pinky in the Brain from last year as well. They were teams that were constantly chopping and changing riders, and for them it was more important to have a team identity rather than a name on the front where that name might not necessarily be the person on the, on the bike. Makes our job easier uh, as well. It <laughs> uh, means we don't have to be calling riders other riders' as names. We can just go with the team, which makes it so much easier as to just see it as the bike uh, as such, which is how everyone at home should see it as well. Uh, effectively, it is a team. It's just, yeah, that machine that's the one scoring the points, the rider at uh, the one piloting it, uh, of course, over the course of this fantastic season. Uh, we have got five seconds left to go in this session. It seems that no one else was able to top Will Howard's time at the top. To be fair to Sean Whitaker, uh, albeit in two different classes in two different sessions as such got within half a second so a bit better than three quarters of a second yeah time still came down but Will Howarth in that qualifying session was dominant nonetheless uh, as the chequered flag flies at the end of that session it's Will Howarth for the open team class on top of the table Sean Whitaker in standard in P2 Team Acme Racing P3 Ben O'Keefe P4 Harrison O'Keefe with P5 Team Ernie the Badger in 6th Gary O'Keefe in 7th Madison Martley in P8 and Kieran Evans, the other Moto team, team or open team, should I say, uh, did not complete a lap after encountering a mechanical issue on their out lap. Of course, we'll have to uh, compare and contrast the lap times between qualifying two and qualifying one to get the final qualifying results. We will uh, let you know what is going to happen. Of course, we uh, do have a new finishing format today, as you can see there, uh, for the riders after the race. We'll get that on display. We do actually have uh, proper podium boards out now as well, so it's not just pulling into the pit lane and the pats on the back. No, we've got a full-on celebration to enjoy down there with all their, uh, their family and team members and whatnot. So that'll be very exciting to look forward to. We'll be seeing that in action later on with the racing. And it looks like we are getting ready for the second qualifying session of the Extreme 200 class. You can see, well, I mentioned earlier, that we can see uh, a lot of our Ovalis are there already. Again, Ovali uh, are allowed to be uh, here at Fab Racing nowadays. Reigning champion of the Extreme 200 class, of course, is Sullivan Mounsey who's uh, got the call-up to Red Bull Rookies this season. So obviously a huge congratulation to Sullivan. Alongside him in Red Bull Rookies this year as well is another uh, Fab Racing graduate, Evan Belford. So a huge, huge congratulations to those guys. Um, yeah, so brilliant to see them up in Red Bull Rookies and uh, we look forward to seeing them competing on an international stage and seeing their progress and what they can do. Uh, and uh, they're all testing as well recently, last few days. Uh, Evan Belford is here today as well. I've just been told in my ear, so we'll keep an eye out for him. He's not racing, but he's just, uh, you know, here About turning up to, you know, show his support for his comrades and all of that in the category. Of course, we've got many other fab riders uh, across the world doing things as well. A bigger and better series, you know, across um, in uh, in Junior GP this year. Uh, Johnny O'Shea, Evan Belford, Casey O'Gorman, they all look to be uh, competing. Uh, Eddie O'Shea, and uh, as well, of course, we've had countless riders across history coming through the fab ranks. We've got the likes of Scott Ogden over in Moto3 at the moment, Danny Ken, the uh, Moto3 champion a few years ago, and Scott Redding as well up in Moto uh, GP. Of course, we've had riders uh, in WSBK, we've had riders in BSB. You know, fab racing is the place for young riders to come in Britain if they want to start their motorcycle career. And uh, as the Extreme 200 class about to get underway then, so again, 
no reigning champion on the grid at the moment. Uh, Sullivan Mounty is off doing his whole Red Bull rookies thing. Don't know why you prioritise that over Fab Racing, to be honest. But as they make their way out onto the circuit for the final qualifying session, a lot of Ovalis there, which is great to see them uh, coming and getting some track time here at Fab Racing as well. But again, it's a, it's a championship that's changed uh, a lot over the last few years, Zach. Of course, it used to be what we call the Pit Bike Open Championship, uh, even though that wasn't necessarily its official name. It was essentially just the Pit Bikes 140 with a bit more relaxed regulations. Then they tightened down on the Pit Bike regulations, opened it up to Mini GP bikes, and now we just see this wonderful mishmash hybrid. in front of us here today. Hybrid, exactly. So it creates some fantastic racing. We're ready for some reason. It looks like some of the guys are trying to get racing in the qualifying session eager. as well. Very eager. Of course, uh, yeah, they are into their second qualifying. The races will be coming up. We'll be getting through, uh, well, the entirety of race ones. Uh, today, race two and three will be coming uh, over the course of tomorrow. That's the 99 machine. Not entirely sure as to who that is uh, at this time. Coming back into the pit lane. Uh, so not going to be able to set uh, any lap time uh, at the moment. But of course, still uh, just under 10 minutes left to go in this session. Uh, speaking to a couple of riders earlier on, obviously, in the interviews and touching on how important qualifying is for the track position here at Lid. Uh, of course, over the course of, uh, of last season, of course, that double round that we had, more often than not, it was the pole sitter, at the very least for race one, that was able to then convert uh, going into, obviously, race one, for the most part, actually, into race two and three as well. So it seems the general consensus, actually, is there is a big focus on qualifying in, a, in order to convert that into, into race position as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it is very, very fast here at Lid. Relatively narrow as well. You can overtake, but especially given that it's the first round of the season, it's very different condition to what it was last year as well. Last year, it was a double opening round, so we had six races in one weekend, which obviously was very, very tiring for everyone involved. But also, on the Friday morning, everyone woke up to snow. Uh, so, you know, which had to be cleared out of the way very quickly. Um, here, you know, it's lovely and balmy. It's about 50 degrees C. Slight uh, chill coming from the sea. Of course, we're very, very close to the coast here. So a little bit of wind and just that sea breeze that just washes over. But it's lovely conditions. Um, so very, very different. So, you know, the last time the riders were here, you know, the track has changed since then, given the conditions. And as well, it's the first race of the season. There's going to be a little bit of that winter rust there for some people. They want to just want to get out on track and just enjoy the first race. But especially getting later on into the weekend when that confidence starts building up on the bike, you start getting back into your rhythm. You know, you can make some fantastic moves around here. I mean, cast your mind back to a few years ago in the Pit Bike 140 cast where Reese Peacock won the race with a daring last corner overtake on the final lap. That was an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal move. Uh, you know, there are lots of overtaking opportunities here. You've just got to be brave and you've got to be, you've got to be looking for them. On top of the timing sheets at the moment, we've got some fab racing royalty. Ethan Sparks, the number 62, making his way back to fab racing. The LS2 Helmets Mini GP70, uh, former champion, back here this weekend. Great to see him uh, in the Extreme 200 cast. Lovely to speak to him earlier as well. And lovely to speak to the reigning double champion of the Mini GP50s and the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 championship, Marco Holt. He's here as well this weekend competing on the Extreme 200s. Both of them, of course, you know, getting a bit old for that category now. They're both champions as well. You know, they've kind of done their time. They've moved on to bigger and better things. Ethan, of course, is off racing in Europe. Uh, Marco doing similar things as well this year. But it's great to have them back here at Fab, uh, Fab Racing Royalty. Uh, if you've got a few really big names in this category, although there's no reigning champion. Uh, you know, we haven't got the likes of Philip Sraviak or Sullivan Mounsey with us here today. You know, we've got Sparks, we've got Wilson Dilks, Blake Wilson, Mark Holt, Henry McCartney's here. Uh, we've also got Ollie O'Gorman, Casey O'Gorman's younger brother. He's around here as well. So a really, really competitive field to look forward to here as well. Again, all of these guys have all come through Fab Racing and many of them have you know, moved upwards and onwards in the world of motor motorcycle racing. This really is the best place to start your young motorcycle journey. It's, it's evident. The, uh, I mean, the, the, the proof is there with how many graduates that we've had move on uh, to bigger and better things. We touched on Ethan Sparks. Of course, he's racing in the Mini GP Austria Championship. So we'll be looking to uh, impress there. Same to a Marco Holt. So they're here, obviously, with the Aprilia chassis uh, to, to get some more experience on that bike uh, to, uh, of course, learn how to go quick, how to compete, obviously, at the high level. And at the end of the day, it's more time out on track, out on the bike, and every time you are there, you are trying to learn something. So it'll be interesting to see how they both do here. And with it being, you know, a little bit more on the warm side, hopefully be a bit more to what they're going to be used to over in Europe. 
yeah, fingers crossed anyway. Uh, again, it's not too nice here when it's cold, and especially with the sea breeze. We are looking at lovely weather all weekend. A little bit of cloud cover uh, tomorrow. Potentially a few drops of rain, but nothing too drastic. It's definitely going to be dry racing conditions the whole way through. And again, we can see we've got some lovely sunshine here. Nice and warm, you know, it's really starting to feel like summer, almost, as we're heading through. Uh, if you're just joining us, hello and welcome. Five and a half minutes left to go in the second qualifying session of the Extreme 200 class. Here, the opening round of the 2024 Fab Racing Minibikes British Championship. You join myself, Ross McIntyre and Zach Sweeney, alongside me to bring all of the action uh, this weekend. Of course, let us know, uh, leave a comment who you're supporting, who what you're doing, you know, where you're from, where you're watching from around the world, but it's a pleasure to bring you all of the action. Ethan Sparks, though, still on top of the timing sheets. Henry McCarthy is pushing him, though, Zach. He is, yeah. I mean, there is less than half a second between them. Wilson Dilk's up there as well. He's less than a tenth of a second off uh, that 31 machine of McCartney. So incredibly close qualifying session here. Ethan Sparks, though, I mean, we're talking a 40-second lap time. Not a lot of opportunity to actually go and make that lap time up uh, here, obviously, at, at Karting Circus. I mean, there is plenty of corners. So, uh, of course, with mid-high-speed chicanes as well, a lot of opportunity for you to be quite committed into the corner uh, and therefore a, a good opportunity for you there to, to actually uh, gain some time relative however Ethan, Ethan Sparks we're talking about the others using those committed opportunities to, to make up lap time he's gone and put it up even quicker 0.6 of a second and while I am talking about obviously opportunities to make up time and how there is a lot of commitment needed there's not a huge abundance of corners and each corner you can effectively see it as oh, I can make up a tenth of a second here I can make up half a half a tenth here or whatever six tenths of a second around such a short lap I mean that, that's tough to gain no I mean um, with, with four te seconds four seconds four minutes left to go should I say uh, you know, Ethan is just absolutely flying. Of course, you know, Ethan, you know, we know he's got talent. He's got great support behind him as well. Uh, being run in Europe by a uh, born breed of legends. Uh, race winner Chaz Mortimer. Uh, for those of you uh, who watched Grand Prix motorcycle racing back in the, uh, in the 60s, uh, he's helping Ethan on his journey. And it's, uh, you know, great to see Ethan just continuing to develop as he does. We've got a fair few riders out on track now. 16 riders out on track at the moment. Uh, all doing their thing here in this qualifying session. Hello and welcome. If you are just joining us, we've not missed any racing action, despite the fact it does look like they're racing out on track at the moment. Believe me, it is just the second qualifying session for the Extreme 200 class. Although we are not too far away, with only three minutes and 20 seconds left to go in this qualifying session. Two more qualifying sessions left to come in the uh, Mini F1 sidecar and the uh, LS2 Helmers Mini GP70 uh, British Championship. Then we will be underway for our first uh, races of the season. Of course, all of the race ones to look forward to this afternoon. Ten races to go. And then we'll have race twos and race threes all tomorrow. Again, if you're not sure with the format, just to remind you, the qualifying positions is the same for all three races. So a good qualifying is absolutely paramount. And uh, your best lap time is taken from the two sessions. So it's not the final, it's just whatever your best lap time is. That determines where you start, and then you go on your way. Of course, we'll have all the grids confirmed for you as soon as possible. Always, it looked like there was some racing action there as some other riders dived into the pit lane. That looked to be the number 64 coming in there with another ride. You can see some of the Mini F1 sidecar guys getting ready to go around as well. And again, we mentioned earlier, Zach, you know, they've got a huge opportunity with the eternal champion Mick Williams being a no-show this weekend. That's a huge opportunity for them to gain some points and gain a foothold early doors in the championship. And right now on the Extreme 200, Sparks dominating this session. Wilson Dilks in second, just holding off Henry McCartney again. We'll have to confirm the final qualifying positions for you after Afterwards, but Ethan Sparks, in this session at least, is looking like he's the man with the pace. He is. I mean, to be fair, if you look around the rest of the field, there is a lot of gaps that are sort of a tenth and a half, even less than a tenth of a second. Dilks versus McCartney for the front row, at least obviously in Q2 provisionally. Wilson versus Marco Holt, that's separated by just 44 thousandths of a second. You've got the two Smiths, there's Louis and Jake as well, not really too far apart. Austin Johnson leading that sort of trio of, uh, of bikes, 9, 10 and 11 in this qualifying session. So, take away Sparks, and you've actually got some good competition. No, you do indeed. I mean, Sparks is doing what Sparks does best and just flying away at the front. Again, if you've been watching Fab Racing for a few years, you'll uh, remember 
Ethan's year of just utter domination in the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. Uh, but, you know, it's still competitive throughout the field. And again, maybe this is just a, a, a very bizarre situation where Sparks just feels quick. It'll come to the race. And maybe he just winds at the back of it. You know, maybe he's out there just looking to get some race training. Maybe he's out there just for time on the bike. We're not really sure. We'll have to find out a little bit later on course the extreme 200s race one the third last race of the day here today and as we follow some of the riders round well, there is the number nine that the number eight sorry of blake wilson currently in p4 uh, his lap time only two tenths of a second off of henry mccartney in front uh, you know blake and henry both very very strong driver riders wilson in p2 as well uh, it is a very very strong field in this Extreme 200s Championship. With 25 seconds left to go, it is do or die time in this qualifying session. Has anybody got what it takes to improve or is the session got to the point where maybe you've just used a little bit too much tyre, maybe the tyre's just a little bit too warm again. It is strangely warm for this time of year at Lid. So it may just be that everyone's pushed the tyre a little bit too hard. We'll have to wait and see. Checkered flag is coming out exactly now. And that's the end of the session. Can anyone improve on their final lap? Zach Sweeney. Well, let's find out. Of course, Ethan Sparks seems very secure in that provisional pole position. But of course, the later on in the session you get, you get closer and closer to your optimal. You're improving constantly. And it almost gets to the point where there's not much time left to find. There's not really much place to go. You're getting closer and closer to the ceiling. And it's harder and harder to hook up that perfect lap time. So for Ethan Sparks, absolutely sensational stuff. McCartney and Wilson have taken the checker. Uh, they're three and four. Dilks as well to round off in P2. I think a slight improvement to just bring it to a 41 at 209 uh, or sorry 41 dead that uh, was his best lap time of the session didn't quite manage to improve on that previous one but yeah great stuff great stuff indeed sparks ends that session sensationally six tenths of a second ahead of wilson dilks in p2 henry mccarney ends the session in p3 with blake wilson in p4 marco holt He's in P5, the uh, reigning double champion of both Mini GP classes here in Fab Racing. He's followed by Harley Baker in P6. Finley Pole Hill was 7th with David Ferns in 8th, Austin Johnson 9th and Louis Smith rounding out our top 10. Jake Smith was 11th, Harry Payne in P12, Annabelle McCarthy was 13th, Ollie O'Gorman 15th, Ashley Powell 16th and Bradley Powell in P16. That is it for our qualifying of the Extreme 200s class. Got uh, only a few more qualifying sessions left to go now, Zach. Again, we'll confirm all of the qualifying results to you as soon as they're available to us. Hopefully that is not too far away. But for now, two more qualifying sessions left to go. And now it is time for potentially the most tense uh, uh, category of the weekend, you know, the Mini F1 sidecars, with the reigning champion not being here for his first no-show in a long, long time. It is a real, real opportunity for everybody else in the grid. It's anybody's guess as to who's going to be quick, who's going to wrap up pole, who's going to wrap up some strong points. Well, I mean, you come into every season with that mentality anyway, because you never know what people have done over the winter, what prep they've been able to do, how much time they've been able to get on the bike, coming into a weekend, how they're feeling, confidence, conditions, so many things come into it add on top of that the reigning champion not being present it just throws everything up in the air a lot of tension going into what is already a pretty peculiar class of racing because you know you used to just seeing one person there now you've got two people on what is a very cramped bit of space but so vital to have that passenger there they, they add so much uh, of course to the pace of the bike so yeah it should be a very very interesting one and uh, well let's see how we get on we will have to wait and see there you can see it in your picture now surely the one that you know, if I was a betting man, I'd certainly be putting money on for being the ones who've got to take advantage of the absence of Mick Williams this weekend. That, of course, being the Green Streets. Those guys over the uh, winter of 2022 into 2023 put in a lot of work into that sidecar and uh, came around in 2023. And suddenly, being a very, very close challenger, it was a real, real massive gain uh, in pace from where they were the previous year to really challenging Mick Williams for the championship. Uh, they were, you know, the first team to take a win off of Mick Williams and Mike Elms in, uh, I think it was some years when they uh, when they managed to win a race in 2022. In the 2023, they had some great, great weekends. Unfortunately, 
wasn't quite enough in the end. They just about missed out on the championship by a handful of points. It was dramatic at the end as well, to say the least. You know, we had uh, the two teams of uh, with the Green Streets and Mick Williams and Mike Helms, you know, bashing into each other seemingly every other race. And there was controversy. The stewards had to get involved multiple times. It was a real dramatic end to the year. Unfortunately for the Green Streets, did quite pan out the way they wanted to. They had to settle as being vice champions. This year, you think, you know, put in a bit more work on the sidecar. You know, that hunger's clearly there. Surely you think they're coming into this year. You know, they've got their eyes on that top prize. You say that, but we went to speak to them a little bit earlier on, didn't we, with uh, regards to uh, obviously just how they're feeling coming into this season. And they said, now nah, we're busy. We've got things to do. We're already neck deep and trying to get this, uh, this, this bike prepped. So they have a, a lot on their plate coming into this season. Hopefully everything is sorted, but it's never good to start a championship, particularly one where all eyes are on them. Uh, effectively, they were so close to the championship, they were able to start their race winning campaign in 2023 uh, with a double victory from pole position at Ella Park. So all eyes are on them. They are the ones that are almost expected to take the, the helm with, with Mark Williams' his absence. And coming into it already with a little bit of tension, already maybe some problems going on at, at, at camp, it, it can maybe sort of creep in and, and there can be some doubts in their mind. Or they're just going to completely ignore that and go quickest anyway because that's what it seems to be early doors. Yeah, whatever problems they were having when we went to speak to them early, they've either resolved or just, you know, got on the thing and got on with it because the Green Street's currently top of this session of 53.822, one and a half seconds quicker than Vince Bailey on the number 369. They're currently in P2. There's the 420 of Martin Hills. Uh, they are just about to complete their first lap, having to, oh, getting a bit racy out there already as uh, Martin Hills actually starts his first lap as uh, Vince Bailey maintains his P2. Mark Parker, he's in P3 on the 230 machine and Chris and Robert in P have also made their way out onto the circuit and uh, they've slotted into P4 at the moment. The gap between uh, P2, 3 and 4, that being Vince Bailey, Mark Parker and Chris and Robert in P, it's actually quite close there. So although at the moment it looks like the Green Streets have got a ridiculous amount of pace because they've just gone four and a half seconds faster than anybody else, which is just ludicrous stuff. Uh, the guys fighting for second all looking quite close. They're all within, you know, seven, seven and a half tenths of a second of each other. This could be quite an exciting battle we've got forming here. I think so. I think we are going to be looking uh, very, very good. Of course, those three teams uh, uh, battled over, of course, uh, in 2023. Jason Leo, uh, Jason and Leo Greenstreet, I should say, uh, at the top of the timing at the moment, a 50.0 dead. That is absolutely rapid. Uh, Mark Parker was able to get a little bit closer, just 3.6 ahead of, uh, uh, or well, behind, uh, uh, of course, the 90 machine. We've still got just over five and a half minutes left to go in this session, so still a, a decent amount of time, to say the least, to, to to maybe go and improve three and a half seconds though that's a lot of time to find that is a lot of time indeed it's great to see uh, mark parker and chris impy slowly building up uh, their lap times again one thing you do have to remember if you're you know not familiar with mini f1 sidecar racing is they these things do take time to get up to pace they just take a lot of time to come to the riders it takes a lot of time to warm up and just you know get to grips with the thing uh, so even though the greens just gone out there and just suddenly hounding in the laps as they always do uh, you know Mark Park and Chris Impey, you know, every lap, you know, you're taking half a second, seven tenths of a second out of your previous best, just because they're slowly warming up. They'll be definitely hammering in their best lap times at the end of this session, which is still just under five minutes away from us. Uh, so still some time to improve from there. We've got six sidecars out in the circuit at the moment. Only five have set a lap so far. You know, 420 of Martin Hills has crossed the, uh, the start-finish line, but it's not registering as them having set a lap. And so I'm wondering if they're potentially having a transponder issue of some sort. Obviously not ideal if they are. Uh, 420 not registered as currently having a lap time, that being with Martin Hills behind the handlebars. Jeremy Alexander currently in P5 on the number 11 machine with Vince Bailey P4. Chris and Robert in P starting up into P3. Mark Park with the M's up to P2. Jason Leo Green Street into the 49s. We go 49. 697 absolutely ridiculous lap times that we're seeing here at the moment in the second qualifying of the mini f1 sidecars um yeah just crazy crazy stuff it really is uh, and uh, of course i mean you touched on the, the the warming up process as such bedding themselves into the session 
of course, that does also apply to, to Jason and Leo Greenstreet. Of course, they're also going to slowly build themselves up. But I, I guess a part of that also goes back to what I was saying with the Extreme 200. As the session improves, you do slowly but surely get closer and closer to your optimum. You you find time in, in places. You hook up that good lap because it's not just about the rider getting a good lap. It's also about the passenger and that, that the communication and that, that the re relationship between the pair of them. They both effectively have to nail the lap. They both have to find where they can gain time effectively. And, the, uh, and the, the, the quicker they get, the harder it is to get quicker. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, it's all about just trusting in each other in sidecar racing, especially mini F1 sidecar racing, where, you know, it's so small, there is nothing to stand on. Three minutes left to go in this final qualifying session uh, for the mini F1 sidecars. Uh, Jason Leo, Green Street, currently at the top of the table, a 49.697 behind them for three and 8.9 seconds, should I say, is Mark Parker on the 2.30. Uh, Chris and Robert in P two and a half tenths away in P4. And uh, a bit, yeah, Chris in P3, should I say, P4, Vince Bailey, 1.3 seconds away. Jamie Alexander, P5 further one second away. Martin Hills still not showing as completed a lap just yet. But with a little bit of time left to go in this session, back to uh, just what you were saying a moment ago, Zach. Uh, you know, it does take a while to, for the bike to come, but again, like you said, once you start going faster, it's harder to get even faster. You start reaching both your limit and the limit of the sidecar as well. There's only so much that it can do mechanically. As uh, Again, Martin Hill's seemingly having issues. They are still going around, but still not registered the setting lap time. So I, I, I'm going to assume there's some sort of transponder issue for the pair of them, which is a big shame. Hopefully they can get that sorted for the racing. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys, you know, they're all lovely in the sidecar paddock. They're a really nice bunch. And of course, they're their own kind of unique community as well. Uh, you know, obviously, because their form of motorsport is so different to all the others that we have here at Fab Racing today. Um, but, you know, when they're out of track, they're just crazy. I mean, my granddad used to race sidecars and uh, just used to, yeah, did not in, uh, thought the guys in the sidecars was mental, shall we say. Uh, still one minute and 30 seconds left to go in this qualifying session before the chequered flag. And uh, as you can see there, the green streets, they've had enough. They've pulled into the pits. Looks like I think everyone has uh, kind of had enough out there. Looks like the green streets, well, I think it's pretty safe to say they're going to be on pole, even though we don't have the final confirmation. Four seconds ahead, Zach. That's just crazy, crazy stuff. It's a safe bet, I think, uh, for, for those guys. I mean, we said coming into this, they were almost expected to go and potentially take the top step and take the mantle from Mick Williams, who, again, isn't here this weekend. A uh, couple of changes, uh, of course, up and down the order, but for the most part, uh, at the moment, Green Street ahead of Mark Parker by just, oh, uh, just under four seconds uh, between the pair of them, quarter of a second back to then P3. That, that competition between Parker and MP, quarter of a second between the pair of them, should be, should be a good race. Yeah, it should be indeed. I mean, of course, we'll have to wait out and find out what's going to happen in the race later. Of course, the Mini F1 sidecars with their opening race of the season. They'll be on circuit later on this afternoon. Martin Hills, the, uh, the 420, the only sidecar out on circuit at the moment. 20 seconds left to go. Uh, they should be completing this lap. But um, as we can see, it's going to be very interesting to see what is going to happen in the race. Right then, it is time for our final qualifying session. It is time for the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. And well, Zach, of course, this is the premier class we have here at Fab Racing. This is the one that everybody, all the junior riders want to make to want to win. And well, it is looking more hotly contested than ever heading into 2024. Of course, last year we had Marco Holt domination. The, uh, only the second ever rider after Keisho Gorman to win both the 50s championship and the 70s championship in the same year. Of course, it must be said that the 50s championship was rather a bit of a revenge tour after he was well on his way to winning it in 2022 for a bad leg break while racing in Spain. Uh, put an end to his year, unfortunately for him. But he had a phenomenal, phenomenal year last year. Of course, he's now moved on to bigger and better things, but we've got some fantastic, fantastic riders out there looking to take his crown. Of course, you know, you've got the likes of Arch O'Brien. Uh, we know we spoke to him early. He's been doing a lot of work uh, on the off season, uh, which is great to hear. Of course, we've got the likes of Blake Wilson, Wilson Dilks as well there, all in there. You know, it could be very, very close out there in the Fab Racing Premier Championship. And, you know, coming into the season, it's anyone's guess as to who's going to be, you know, up the front. Absolutely. Uh, and again, same 
sort of dynamic coming into things with uh, the, the, the a new championship, a new season, new riders uh, effectively sometimes as well. But off the back of 2023, we had five uh, riders take a victory at least one time over the course of the whole season. But there they are, confirmed as pole position, of course, uh, in the Mini F1 sidecars, the Green Streets, unsurprisingly so. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure you have to uh, go and sit in the number one spot after qualifying, but you know, the Green Street's looking to prove a psychological point here and doing it anyway. We are underway for the final qualifying section of the day, and it's the one that everyone has been waiting for. The LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship second qualifying session is a go. And the riders are slowly but surely making their way out onto the circuit. This, of course, is the one that every young rider wants to win. This is the one that every young rider wants to be and This is the one that you know, launches the careers of so many riders that we see out there in the world of motorsport today. It looks like Beth Ashby is going to be the first one to start a flying lap. There then is Arch O'Brien, who we mentioned earlier, Spider-Man, if you will, you know, off of that famous helmet of his. He starts his lap. Let's follow Archie just a little bit on the number 91 machine, making his way through the first chicane. Very, very tricky through there. You really have to haul the bike over now. Second chicane, very similar as we come through. I'm going to go for the right, then to the left, and then the right again. It's really hard just to tip the bike back over now. The big, big hair down the bottom end of the track. And now it is flat out. Archie O'Brien, a little bit of traffic in the form of Beth Ashby. Now just a slight lift, slight dab of the brake, maybe a downshift into the right-hander. And now from here, it is absolutely full throttle, banging against the rev limiter, coming into the final corner. Archie O'Brien will be the first to finish and record a lap round the final corner he comes number 91 what's it going to be he slots in with a 42 with 664 very very competitive lap time there from Archie O'Brien Harrison Day into P2 a 43.7 a little bit of time to build up there Archie O'Brien though he has come out of the gates on all cylinders. He is. He is absolutely flying. And of course, uh, speaking to him a little bit earlier on, Wilson Dilks actually tops him by over half a second for provisional pole. Can't read too much into it at this stage. Still nine minutes left to go uh, in this second qualifying session before we head our way into the race session. So Dilks and O'Brien, of course, they were four and fourth and fifth in last year's championship. They did go toe-to-toe -to -toe a number of times, uh, each of them with a win to their name. Uh, 14 podiums to O'Brien at 10 to the form of uh, Wilson Dilch as well. So they definitely know what they're doing uh, on these mini GP70s. They've had a year to bed in though. Of course, O'Brien last year was uh, his first year really uh, taking it to the to the GP70s. This year, he's got that year under his belt and he should be able to contend. I mean, a quick response and another even quicker response from Wilson Dilch. They're going to be swapping all session. Oh, they are indeed. We have got a treat on our hands in the final qualifying session of the day. Dilks or O'Brien for the fastest lap time seems to be the battle we are watching Finley Polehill currently in P3 that is five tenths of a second off of O'Brien in P2 Harry Payne in P4 followed by Jensen Bishop there goes Archer O'Brien two tenths faster this time than Wilson Dilks Dilks crosses the line second if they're just lapping and lapping and lapping so we can expect Dilks' lap time in just a short moment and uh, he should be crossing the line soon. Yes, indeed. There is the number 85. What's the lap time going to be? And it doesn't look like he improved on the lap time. No, he did not, actually. Wilson Dilks uh, actually didn't improve. So, O'Brien holds on to the top of the timing sheets for a little while longer. 11 bikes out on the circuit at the moment. We've got O'Brien, Dilks, Finley Polehill, Harry Payne, Jensen Bishop, Harrison Day, Beth Ashby, George Ackerman, Hamish McIntosh. Great to see him back. The Sam Garner in P10 and Byron Johnson in P11. And just as I said, Sam Garner in P10, he launches himself into P7 with a 43.637 on that lap. There's still O'Brien and Dilks at the top of the timing sheet. And it seems to be those two are the ones we're going to have to have our eyes on heading into the race. Uh, only two tenths of between them and a bit of a gap back to Philly Cole and P3. There goes Wilson Dilt, 10th and a half, back to the top of 41.528. These boys are flying out there. Yeah, they are pushing each other to new heights, I think, and that's always good to, to have that rival, someone that you can contend with because it forces you to be quicker. It's a sink or swim scenario. It's all good dominating, things like that, but you don't have that motivation or, or at least a clear defining motivation to go and search for time. O'Brien versus Dilks coming into this, the practice sessions, Q1 a little bit earlier on as well. They'll know where they are in the pecking order 
they'll know that those two are the ones that they're going to be aiming to go and be already uh, with still six and a half minutes just over about six minutes 20 seconds left to go in this session they have already absolutely smashed Archie O'Brien's pole time of last year they have indeed we are flying there is the man that we just mentioned Archie O'Brien visor up just waiting not to the camera as well he does like to play up uh, for some showbiz does Archie O'Brien a wonderful wonderful young man off of the racetrack a ferocious talent on him gets going out of the pit lane looks like he just came in uh, speaking to his mechanics and his team and his probably his parents as well just getting a bit of feedback uh, where have you been watching Wilson tracks are where does he look faster than me what do I need to do now he's heading back out still five minutes left to go in this session still time to improve for the number 91 let's see what he's able to do as there is still five and a half minutes left to go but it's anybody's guess as to who's going to be on top of the time of Chiefs. Will it be Wilson Dilks? Will it be Archer Bryan? Or will someone else maybe even come in and just suddenly unlock something and fly to the top? Let's see what he can do on this flying lap, flying down into turn one, hard on the brakes, tip the bike back over to the left, and now get back on the throttle. It's not a long run, though, into the second chicane. Very, very similar to the first, although the left is a little bit tighter. Bit of an earlier apex, and you've just got to wind off that speed a bit more. Now, the big right-hander down the bottom end of the circuit. You've got to trust the front tyre through there. And now it is flat out. A little bit of a lift into the right again through here. Very, very tricky. We've seen some big offs through here. This is where the suspension is at its absolute most loaded. Just going to once again trust the tyre and hope that it's not going to give way. Back straight to go. Flying into the final corner. O'Brien leaving nothing on the table as he flies round. Comes what's the lap time going to be? It is an improvement, but it's not by much. Puts him a bit closer to Wilson Dilks of 41.660. Now he is, uh, well, just over a tenth of a second away. But it wasn't a massive improvement, but it was his first flying lap uh, since he rejoined the track after diving into the pit. So again, maybe just once again, just building up that pace, building up that speed and that confidence in the bike, getting the tyres maybe a bit more up to temperature as well after they were sat in the pit lane for a few moments. Let's see what he can do this time, Zach. Yeah, I mean... It does take a while to sort of get warmed up, get into a rhythm, particularly at a nice flowing circuit like Lid. It, it, it pays really nicely to, to settle into a rhythm. Let's see what O'Brien can do across the line again. Oh. Another very slight improvement and brings the gap between the two at the top to just eight thousandths of a second with less than four minutes left to go in this Q2 session. The 91 machine able to catapult him, uh, himself up. He knows that was a good lap because he's taken a bit of a rest for this one. Breathe in going to collect himself and then hopefully uh, go again with uh, still a couple of opportunities to go for it uh, uh, over the course of the rest of this session. He's a, uh, a rider that really likes to just be smooth, that, that smooth, consistent feel that he, uh, uh, of course, comes to know and love. Not overly aggressive with the bike, able to just you know, sort of caress it through the corners uh, and that pays really nicely. Uh, softer suspension set up on the front forks, of course, of that GP70. Unfortunately, we've got a rider uh, stranded there between the, uh, the first UK. Yeah, some issues there. Looks like Finley Pole who will have a few problems. Hopefully everything is okay uh, for the nine bike. Uh, but with two minutes and 50 seconds left to go in this session, uh, of course, oh wow, oh no, I thought Wilson Dillix had just got really fast then. Turns out he hadn't, I was just misreading our timing boards. But it's important to remember again that the, uh, the lap times that we take for the grid is your best lap from either, uh, from, yeah, it's your best lap from either qualifying one or qualifying two. Uh, Wilson Dillix at the moment, uh, his qualifying lap one time was ever so fractionally faster. I mean, we're talking thousands of a second. Archo Bryce qualifying one lap time was a 41.7 so he's improved if he's able to get in front of Dilks here ever so slightly he may well be on for pole position here we'll have to wait and see with two minutes left to go O'Brien back out onto the circuit on the number 91 Wilson Dilks uh, still going around as well uh, O'Brien's last quarter lap was a 41.7 at the moment he's clocked a 41.536 yeah good lap time and still 
just under two minutes left to go. So they're probably going to be able to squeeze in two more flying laps in this session. I suppose that's a good thing about having, you know, sort of a 12-minute session and less than a minute lap times. You get a nice abundance of laps to be able to put in. Uh, there is the Spider-Man helmet itself, the 91 machine. Now across the line to complete the back end of qualifying. That was his outlap. Let's see what he can do when he gives it some. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, following Archie O'Brien into the second chicane. Looked very, very tidy. Through chicane one. One bit of a wobble as he tips the bike back over and uh, runs ever so slightly uh, tight coming uh, out of that chicane. So maybe costing a bit of time there. The uh, bike looking pretty steady for the most part, apart from that small moment. It's all very, very smooth. Again, Archie's a really, really smooth rider. You know, he just kind of floats through corners and it just looks super, super magical when you're watching him at the side of a track, especially when you compare him to someone like last year's champion, Mark Holt, who was so, so aggressive. Held up a little bit there at the end by Beth Ashby, so it's not going to be an improvement that time. This next time won't be an improvement either. He will have time for one more, though. 45 seconds left to run. There is the number 56 of Sam Garner that we can see. That's Beth Ashby in front as well. Uh, Sam Garner just returning from the European Talent Cup. Of course, he's uh, been wishing him all the best for his journey over there. But as we focus on O'Brien, once again, he's going to get one more lap uh, to pull just over eight tenths out of his back pocket and hopefully secure himself a pole position yeah. with 18 seconds left to go. One more lap to or die. It's bonsai time for Archie O'Brien. This has to be it. Eight thousandths of a second in the Q2 pole. Let's see what he can do. Of course, he's going to be knowing where he can improve in his head. He's going to take a mental note. He knows what he needs to do. He just needs to go and do it. He does indeed. Beth Ashby also looking to improve. She's currently P11. Checkered flag waves here at Lid for the final qualifying session of the weekend. The opening round of the Fab Racing Mini World British Championship. What can Beth Ashby do to try and improve from P11? What can Archo Bryan do? What can Wilson do? So can anyone improve? A few riders already crossing the line. They have not improved so far. Here's the man of the moment, though. Can Archie O'Brien sneak onto the pole position? He comes to the checkered flag now. No, he cannot. Archie O'Brien will start from second place. Wilson Dilts will take the pole. Oh, real shame for Archie O'Brien. Just couldn't quite get there in the end. Wilson Dilks also does not improve on that final lap time. The only rider still out on circuit is, in fact, Finley Polehill. So... Not a lot of change late on the session. I wonder if the conditions maybe just got slightly worse out on circuit. I wonder if you know, the temperature picked up or the wind picked up or maybe even just a change in the atmospheric pressure. It's the little things that can really make a big difference. But it will be Wilson Dilks that starts from the pole position. It will be indeed absolutely sensational stuff. I mean, his best qualifying result of last season was a P3. So a big step up from, from last year, of, of course. He didn't even get inside the top three on both occasions here at Lid uh, in 2023. They had four qualifying sessions for that one. So he's been able to kickstart things really, really well. Big step up from, uh, from, from the back end of 2023 over the winter into this year. Great stuff from Dilks. But I don't think Archie O'Brien's going to be uh, a pushover. I think he's going to be a little bit punchy going into the races. Yeah, absolutely. Archer O'Brien, you know, if he can get a good start, he's always a force to be reckoned with. That is it for our qualifying here at the opening round of the Fab Racing Mini Bike British Championship here at the Lid Kart Circuit. We are moments away from the opening race of the weekend, the AC40 Pro 1. Of course, we've got 10 race ones to look forward to today. And, uh, well, the rookies just need to... Slow, slowly make their way over to the holding area. Uh, still a little bit of time away uh, from the opening race. Uh, we've had some fantastic qualifying sessions there. And now it all comes down to this. It is time for race one of the AC40 Pros. Ladies and gentlemen, the qualifying action is complete. We're moving forward into the first set of races. We're going to complete, of course, all of the classes here today before tomorrow, moving over to races two and three. The adrenaline is going to be surging, and off the back of qualifying, of course, good or bad result, I think you just need to put it aside. You need to focus solely on this race. What can you do in the present? How can you impress? And how can you kickstart the season? Because it's all a stepping stone, isn't it, Ross? I mean, the, the, the morale, the confidence, you take it from each round to the next. So to 
kick things off in 2024 with a good punchy start is going to fill you with confidence and hopefully give you that boost you need for the rest of the season. Absolutely it will. Uh, of course, we're just waiting for the riders to make their way out onto the circuit for the first race of the season. Not just, of course, for this class, but of Fab Racing full stop. It's the moment that we've all been waiting for, and it is just a few short minutes away. Looks like Mason Frederick will be starting from the pole position uh, after a fantastic qualifying run. 1.2 seconds ahead of everyone else was his best lap. Looks like we are going to the grid, and then we're starting a race, so no sighting lap. No traditional formation lap. Uh, it is one out lap. That is your sighting lap. And then it is go time uh, in all of the races. Fedrick starts from the pole position with Preston Baker alongside him. But a great qualifying lap there from Mason Fedrick. He will start on the pole. Preston Baker alongside on the number 93. Kalen Ratcliffe in P3 alongside is Rex Austin. Max Johnson starts from P5 with Kai Hawken in P6. Arthur Rich is 7th with Henry Brody in P8. Danny Longhurst is ninth, and Oliver Wilson rounds out the top 10 and the 10 riders only that we have out here for the AC40 Pros. Not the most competitive qualifying session when you look at Fedrick's lap time, but nonetheless, a very talented grid of young riders looking to put on a show for the opening race of the season. Yeah, of course, they're quite early on on their stepping stone journey throughout the, uh, the, the motorcycle racing career, so there is still a lot to learn, but also Qualifying is, you know, one important lap. You've then got, uh, of course, to deal with the pressure, the consistency of a race. And yes, you can pull out a 1.2 second gap in qualifying, but how well are you going to be at dealing with the pressure of a race? I mean, it all starts from the lights, from getting off the grid. If he tumbles back and loses that advantage that he got through qualifying, it's then going to be a little bit more difficult to actually work his way back through the field. So it should be interesting, potentially. I say all this, he might just be able to get a good start, run away uh, uh, over a second a lap quicker than the rest of the field, or we could have some drama, some spice uh, all the way through. But a sensational lap from Mason Frederick. We spoke to him a little bit earlier on. He said he wanted to win. He's putting his best forward to go and do that absolutely we are moments away from the opening race of the season last words being had with the parents and now it is all eyes to the lights of course the start marshal getting ready to send them on their way and then it'll be time to go racing right then should we get on with this then for the first time in 2024 it is eyes to the lights Light sound, we are on the way in Fab Racing in 2024. Great start there from Preston Baser. Baker, should I say, Caleb Ratcliffe managed to get into P2. Max Johnson in P3 as well. But it is actually Mason Fedrick who leads the way on that number five machine. Currently in the lead, Baker and Ratcliffe close behind as well. But it's all seemingly maintaining position so far, running a little bit wide there. Goes Max Johnson on the 141, coming out of the bottom end of the circuit. Action everywhere. You look on this opening lap as the riders come over the crest and now into the right-hander. Super, super brave through there as they're all absolutely pushing the bike to the limit on this opening lap. But as they come now to the junior circuit, we haven't seen this yet so far today. This is the route that the mini bikes are taking. The mini motos, they break just before the final corner of the outer circuit and they come round through this junior section here. Just a few more overtaking opportunities potentially, but it will be Mason Frederick that leads the way on lap one. Preston Baker in P2. Caelan Ratcliffe rounding out our podium places. Frederick did exactly what he wanted to do. Got away well from the lights and leads early on here in the opening race of the season. Yeah, important for Hull to get early on for the number five machine. He's just able to then uh, work with that effectively. It gives him uh, sort of not necessarily a pressure-free environment, but uh, a foothold to go off, something to base the rest of the race off. Maintaining the lead, that was the minimum. Now we can work on that. Now we can build the gap, settle into a rhythm and try and build that gap away from Baker and Ratcliffe who themselves actually are starting to uh, spread out. The next closest battle is between the 991 and the 141 of Austin versus Johnson. I think that might be that battle uh, right there. So plenty of racing yet to come but an early foothold, an early dominance really from Frederick. Absolutely. I mean you can see uh, on the timing board here uh, you know, if you look at the difference between Baker and Ratcliffe on a P2 and P3 uh, you know, on the previous lap uh, you know, Baker was pulling massively away. 
Okay, the back to further back in the pad. There's still action everywhere we go, though. Uh, this is in the fight for P. Uh, this is the number 95, Arthur Rich versus Danny Longhurst. This is further down the order, currently fighting for P number seven as we continue to go round. Uh, apologies, that's these actually the uh, 96 of Kayla Ratcliffe. So this is the fight uh, for P3, should I say. That's Rex Austin fighting alongside then. So Ratcliffe holding on for the time being, but not very far between them. It was only just over a tenth of a second at the line as they make their way onto the back straight and then breaking to the inside goes Rex Austin. Lovely move. Laid on the brakes. Just textbook page one stuff. But it's what works to get you through. He is now up into the podium places on that 991. Fantastic stuff from Rex Austin to get him through up into the podium as they cross the line. Brilliant, brilliant stuff there from that young man. And now he can maybe try and set his sides ahead and try and claw away with like said, Preston Baker and Mason Fedrick in the lead with six laps left to go. Yeah, it's going to be a tough ask. Of course, already a big gap opened up early on and with these races being fairly short and snappy, you don't actually have a lot of time to go and catch. But, uh, of course, for Rex Austin, he was P3 in the championship, of course, in the AC40 Pros last time, of course, upgraded uh, now and taking that step up to the uh, LC40 Elite, uh, but running P3 on the road as things stand. So looking to, of course, replicate that same success that he shared over 2023, kickstart this this one uh, really nicely um, with, you know, an easy move, uh, a one that we've seen hundreds of times before, but it works and it was a good one indeed. Maybe easy, maybe simple, but it is certainly effective. Great stuff, but it's not over and done yet. Caleb Ratcliffe is still on the attack as they come to the line to make it five laps to go for this pair. Roaring through the first chicane. Look at the commitment there coming through turn one by Rex Austin. That was leaving nothing on the table. Now the second chicane, again, very similar to the first chicane, just a bit of a tighter radius for the left. Means you're just going to take a slightly earlier apex and just wind off that throttle a little bit more. Of course, no gears on these mini motor machines. It is twist and go, simple as you like. Racing at its absolute purest form. Here is the leader, Mason Fedrick, making his way through the junior section of the circuit. Currently, well, at the line last time, it was four and a half seconds ahead of Preston Baker in P2. Absolutely far flying is Fedrick at the moment. He's going to come to the line now. Got some traffic ahead, and he's actually going to have to negotiate with here. No blue flags in Fab Racing. You do have to negotiate traffic uh, on your own. And the gap now 5.7 seconds his last lap was 1.2 seconds faster than Preston Baker Mason Fedrick is a man on a mission right now in a category of his own flying along at the front he really is I mean I tried to hype it up that he might get a poor start or something like that to really spice this race up but no full credit to that young man put the work in in qualifying 1.2 seconds he's now replicating that here for race number one be interesting to see if he can do the same for race two and three once the others have got a couple of you know sessions more sessions under their belt that experience maybe they could learn a thing or two because you're always doing that constantly observing the rider in front to see what they're doing what they're doing differently where they're gaining and then making the own adjustments to yourself but for Frederick at the moment he is just flying no one's even lost sight of him absolutely committed and yet still running not only really quickly but also really consistently usually riders have one or the other he's got a perfect mix of both absolutely Frederick is just scorching along at the front of the pack at the moment Preston Baker P2 Rex Austin rounding out the podium he's managed to pull away just a little bit from Caelan Ratcliffe in P4 but of course it's not over until the chequered flag waves still a long way to go in this race going to be two and a half laps as it stands but looking at the leader he is just out there it's almost like he's on a different circuit he's so far ahead in another race uh, pending some sort of disaster for the number five machine Macy Fedrick is looking set to take a lovely opening win this year but of course we're not going to call it just yet There's still a long way to go anything can happen it's going to be heading on to the penultimate lap now you can see some more traffic ahead once again that's Oliver Wilson on the 126 that are going to have to negotiate as that all oh, that's the number 95 of Arthur Rich uh, looks like he's had an issue of some sort possibly looks like the chain is off down there uh, he was running in P10 was uh, not having he's a uh, yeah it was a disappointing race so far from Arthur Rich who'll be looking to improve in race two and race three but that's a shame to end the opening race of the season 
Fedrick has negotiated Oliver Wilson with a little fuss, to put it mildly. And it just breezed straight past him. Fedrick is going to be starting his last lap shortly. And, you know, you can almost finish this race blindfolded on a back because he's so far ahead of everyone else. I mean, he can give it a go. Uh, it might spice this race up just a little bit. But, yeah, what a way to kick off, not only uh, this weekend, but also this season as well. It really sets things up quite nicely. And we talk about this being the grassroots entry into motorcycle racing. All of these riders are aspiring for the top level. Look out for that name in future. If he's got, obviously, the funding and all the backing behind him, he's proved right now he's got the capability. His best lap as well, not horrendously far off of the lap record set by Archie O'Brien in the AC40 Bros back in 2021. Uh, he is just flying along. But with half a lap to go, Mason Fedrick can now reap the reward it has been a phenomenal phenomenal performance from this young man and with only a handful of corners left to go he can take home what will be a very very satisfying victory heads into the junior section for the final time this race the final time today of course two more races to come tomorrow in the ac40 pros but mason fredericks he's laid down the gauntlet he's shown us what he can do and this is essentially a statement of intent for the rest of the year mason fredrick takes a dominant victory in the opening race of the season here in the ac40 pros no one in sight for the number five brilliant 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 ride from that young man preston baker finishes in second some ten and a half seconds behind with rex austin managing to round out our podium a great ride there from the 991 but my oh my mason fedrick that is how it is done that is showing the rest of the grid if you want to take it to me you've got to bring it to me because that was just brilliant Absolutely. What a result for him. At ten and a half seconds, effectively, at the winning margin. There's the rest of the top ten. Well, Mason Frederick, good start. Incredible stuff. Mason Frederick with a brilliant win. Preston Baker and Rex Austin rounding out our podium. Caelan Ratcliffe finished in fourth place with Max Johnson in fifth. Kai Hawken was P6 with Henry Brody seventh. Danny Longhurst in eighth. Oliver Wilson was ninth. And unfortunately, we did lose Arthur Rich early on. That is it then for the opening race of the season in the AC40 Pros. Of course, they will be back for race two and race three tomorrow. So plenty more racing action to come from those young riders. And plenty more racing action to look forward to today as well. A fantastic race. Let's see if we can uh, see him heading into his podium spot. Indeed he is. Mason Fedrick takes his position by the podium. Great stuff from that young man. Just brilliant performance there. Taking the accolades from mechanics, parents, family, and uh, I'm sure the other riders will be joining him soon. But uh, Mason Fedrick, what a way to start the year with a great win. It is a fantastic win. Uh, of course, we'll wait for P2 and 3 as well to complete the podium, but uh, congratulations from uh, his, uh, his, his competitors. There you can see Preston Baker, Rex Austin, uh, now moving their way in to complete the podium. Congratulations all round. Smiles all round, I'm sure. People immediately uh, running their way over as well. And he's got to be elated. That is a perfect way to start the season. Pole, fastest lap, 10.5 second, winning margin. Can't get better. I mean... I mean, the, that picture... Should have won by 11 just, seconds, but... Yeah. Just incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. Race one of the AC40 rookies. The Flab Racing Rookies Cup is just around the corner here in uh, in Lid. I mean, of course, this is a grid full of many a rider taking on their first racing uh, experience and it is sure to be a fantastic, fantastic experience. As the riders make their way out onto the grid, it's looking like it's going to be a very, very healthy grid of uh, rookie riders here, which is, of course, fantastic to see. Uh, we'll have to find how many are making their way out onto track in just a moment. But as you can see, there are a fair few number of bikes coming out there. Looking at the, uh, the qualifying stats, Nelly Nuth managed to uh, get the pole position there uh, with Jensen Sedras in P2. Emilio Pereira was P3 with Tommy Keats in P4. Tommy Williams was fifth with Joey Atasic in P6. Finley Styles in seventh with Austin Dilks in eighth. Maxwell Keats P9 with Randy Carter in P10. Noah Barfoot was 11th with Ethan Bayliss in P12. James Dermott 13th with Freddie Taylor in 14th. 
Emerson Oakley P15, Jensen Brown was 16 alongside Daisy Ray Grayson, Logan Paisley was P18, and Oscar McAllister in 19th. Casey Reeson rounding out our top 20. And Tyler Schiraldi, our last rider on the grid, he managed to put it into P21. He will, be, of course, be disappointed with that at the back of the grid, but it's still a respectable performance nonetheless. Again, you look at how young these guys are. You know, some of them as young as six years old, and they're getting out there and putting in phenomenal stuff on these bikes. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable how brave these kids are. Six years old... Uh, I don't know what I was doing at six, but it <laughs> definitely <this>. wasn't definitely <laughs> wasn't riding around at 45 mile an hour on two wheels. It's going to be remarkable stuff, of course, lining up on the grid, ready for their first race. Yeah, their first sort of stepping stone for some. They're their first ever potentially motorcycle race here at Lid. Let's see what they can do. We'll have to wait and see. Again, as you said, Zach, this is, well, we've got some returning face from last year, but for many of these guys out here, it's the first time they will be seeing racing action Let's see how they are able to do in the first race of the Fab Racing Rookies Cup in 2024. It's eyes to the lights. It is lights out away we go. Looks like a potential jump start there from someone in the background who got away very, very quickly. It will be Nelly Newt that holds the lead down into turn one, though, by the looks of things. And indeed, it is a great start there. Action behind as well. That's Pereira and Cedrus fighting tooth and nail for that P2 on this opening lap. Looks like we're all clean away from the start, though, which is fantastic to see. And as we continue to make our way around, the riders pushing each other very, very hard indeed as they come around the bottom end of the circuit. And as they continue to go around, it's Nuf from Pereira from Cedrus, your top three. And, uh, well, you can see there the rookies do a great job to keep it clean on that opening lap. Yeah, really good stuff. I mean, the nerves are going to be high. The adrenaline is going to be high. But they've all done a brilliant job is to just keep it clean. Now the opportunity is here. Get your head down, settle into a rhythm, settle into this race. I mean, for some, of course, they're not going to be able to afford to do that. Of course, for Nuth, leading the way at the front, uh, running a really, really good race as things stand. But that battle for P2, very, very close. The question remains, though, are Pereira and Cedric going to work together to try and catch the lead for a second place fair game? Have to run and see. Nelly Nuth establishes half a second of a lead on the opening lap with Emilio Pereira in P2 and Jensen Cedrus in P3. Tommy Williams and Austin Dilks follow them just outside of the podium places. Currently, though, Nelly Nuth is really, really laying down the gauntlet as it stands, putting in a stellar opening race. And we're only on the second lap. Seven laps still to go. Pereira and Cedrus challenging each other. That is Cedrus on the number two, chasing down Pereira on the 31. Cedric's actually had a little bit of a look there into that massive right-hander, which is super, super brave from that young man. Is he able to have a go as we head onto the junior course? No, not quite. So he's going to have to just follow the rider in front for the time being. But again, that is super, super smart racing for him. One of the things that these rookies have to learn is when to overtake, when to go for moves. And that was really, really good from Cedric not to go for what looked like an obvious gap there, but in all reality, maybe wasn't quite the right timing to make a move. He's quite happy just sitting behind Barrera, running his own race, putting some pressure on the right in front as well, maybe trying to force a mistake. This is excellent racecraft from that young man. Yeah, at such an early age, showing such maturity, uh, because it takes a skill, it takes a patience to, to sort of know when, when and when not to go for a move. No matter what discipline of racing you're doing, that strategical element always remains the same. Do I go for it? Is it clever? How long uh, of this race is left to go? How much is there still to gain? And all of those things you're trying to compute in your head while also trying to race these things around Lid Circuit at 45 mile an hour. It's remarkable what these young riders can do. There is, uh, of course, our race leader heading their way into the junior circuit. A double hairpin complex. So it really does open it up for some decent overtaking opportunities. That might be where Cedrus is waiting for. But at least for now, either can't or won't go for that move. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see uh, what Jensen Cedric's plan is. This is great stuff from Nelly. Of course, Nelly, uh, one of the returning faces to the Rookies Cup this year. Uh, into, uh, their opening uh, fab racing season last year. They come back for another one. And uh, of course, you know, you do have a lot of people at different stages in their development. Uh, especially, you know, 
when you've got riders this young and you've got them, you know, in the mini moto categories, you know, obviously there's there's a modicum of, you know, the level of natural talent, but also, you know, the time they've spent on the bike and the work that they put in. Uh, Nelly and Uthman, of course, this being their second season, so they've had a lot more time on the bike than some others. As we can see, second and third place, Pereira and Cedrus once again. Cedrus looking for a way through. Cedrus also a returning face this season, so also got a bit more experience on his side. And right now, the likes of Nuth and Cedrus putting that experience to great use at the moment, currently P1 and P3. Cedrus, though, looks to be a little bit stuck behind the 31 of Emilio Pereira. Just can't quite find the way through at the moment. There's been a few looks here and there, but as it stands, it's just not quite been able to happen as we've got some lap traffic now. And, oh, we've got a lot of lap traffic, actually, as I say that. Looks like the front runners are called the back markers with four laps to go. This could change things up a little bit. Yeah, it can. Oftentimes, you see this in sort of endurance racing, not sort of eight lap uh, sprint races as such in these mini bikes. So yeah, lap traffic always something that you're going to have to contend with. The skill in of itself, just to negotiate, even if they are sort of going to move out of your way, you still have to know where to put the bike. You still have to know where to position yourself and how to effectively clear them through. It seems that for the most part, our race leaders have done so, but look at it. It has elongated them a little bit. Cedrus has fallen a little bit off the back of Pereira and is going to now have to regain that gap. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you said, that's just, that's traffic, isn't it? It causes chaos, it splits things up. And again, in the Fab Racing Rookies Cup, where you have, you know, some riders like front runner, like we see here, Nelly Nuth, who's you know, already been racing for a season and, you know, clearly put a lot of work in and, you know, spent time on the bike over the winter. And then, you know, towards the back of the field, you've got, you know, young riders who this is the first time in a race. You know, they've not spent that time on the bike. Maybe they got the bike for Christmas or something like that. You know, and obviously, given it's winter, or it's very recently been winter, you've not had a lot of time to you know, really start training on the bike. So, for a lot of guys, you know, you've got to understand that there is a big, big pace difference. You know, the field split here in the Rookies Cup is very, very big. But over the course of the season, it will narrow down. You know, the field will start to bunch up as the riders, especially towards the back end of the grid, you know, start to gain that experience and start to learn, start to, you know, push forward. And they will across the year just start pushing forward and uh, well we can't wait for that but right now Nelly Nuth is the one to beat up the top of the table two and a half seconds clear of Emilio Pereira in P2 Jensen Cedrus in P3 has fallen to a second away from Pereira unfortunately as a result of negotiating with that traffic we've got about two and a half laps left to run at the moment we can see there is action everywhere you look I mean even when we're looking at this group here, uh, who are further towards the back of the grid, you know, they're still bunched up, still fighting with each other, and still giving it a good go. They are indeed, and a little bit uh, of a look there going into the second hairpin, not quite committed enough really to go for it, so a good decision uh, just to back out of that one. Penultimate lap then of race number one for the rookies. Sensational stuff, great way to kickstart the season, but with such an abundant grid, and as you say, so many different stages of development, skill sets, things like that, you always effectively have someone to race. You've got the guys in front, uh, in the middle, at the back end, and, you know, it, it, it's kind of harsh to sort of divvy up the field in that sort of manner the front the mid and the and the rear end but they all are on their own ladder they're all on their own stages of development and having a rival having someone close to their level is going to be really beneficial however this young rider right here the 44 machine well someone, someone needs to step up i think <laughs> yeah nelly Nuth is uh, doing a fantastic job right now i was really brave with the lap traffic there wasn't it brilliant stuff there from nelly coming through to start the final lap of this race Nelly knew has been untouchable in the opening round of the season there you can see the last lap frag the yellow background with the black cross that means one more tour of the circuit to the riders just one more go around and then it is time for the checkered flag but Nelly Nuth has just been unbelievable in this race and still getting very brave with the traffic I mean they've got a four second lead and still, you know, trying to get through the traffic in places where you wouldn't even try a regular overtake. They are super, super confident on that bike, looking super, super calm as well, and just siding their way around this big kart circuit. This has been a brilliant performance, and undoubtedly, what a way to open the season. Really, really good stuff. Two corners left to go then for Nelly New. They've been unstoppable all race long. Let's see if this is going to be able to continue going forward this weekend. Great stuff to start the season. Nelly Nuth 
rounds the final corner, takes the checkered flag, and crucially wins the opening race of the Fab Racing Rookies Cup in 2024. Emilio Pereira gets into P2, with Jensen Cedric in P3. Looks like we've had a bit of an off late on in the race there. Oh, that's a real shame for all that rider who was, I believe that was one of the fights we were watching earlier. Have to wait and see who it was that went down. But it will be Nelly Nuth that takes the victory with Emilio Pereira in P2. Jensen Cedric was third with Tommy Williams in P4. Austin Dilks in fifth with Finley Styles in P6. Tommy Keats was seventh with Maxwell Keats in P8. Joey Athasich in ninth. And Randy Carter, he rounds out our top ten. Uh, P11, we've got Noah Barford with James Dermott set to come home in P12. Ethan Bayliss in P13. Freddie Taylor was 14th with Jensen Brown in 15th. Further down the order, Emerson Oakley was 16th with Daisy Grayson in P17. Tyler Shiraldi set to finish 18th. And following him is Oscar McAllister. Oh, hang on a minute. Yo, that's not good. We'll finish off the rest of the grid here quickly. Oscar McAllister was 19th, Casey Reese in 20th, Logan Pace in 21st. Nelly Nuth did another lap after the chequered flag. That could be very, very interesting because that is very much not allowed. The you know, chequered flag is the end of your race. Nelly Nuth's done another lap at racing speed. Oh dear, that man might be going to the stewards. Potentially a dampener on what could be, well, what was a fantastic opening race. It was. I mean, most recently, uh, those following the F1 Academy series as well will know Dorian Pan did the same thing in Saudi Arabia. Slightly different circumstances, but got slapped with a race ruining penalty. We'll see uh, uh, as to what the outcome is on that one because nothing can take away, you know, whether they, whether they keep the, the, the win or not, will be, uh, should be, should be pleased, should be pleased with their results, should be pleased with how they've been able to conduct themselves in this race. There are plenty more to come over the season, but they drove fantastically and they can't, you know, a penalty, whatever the outcome is, is not going to take anything away from that. One thing they can definitely take is the, uh, the lap record. Uh, Baron Johnson's lap of a 101.351 set back in 2020. That is now gone. Nelly News for 101.278. Great stuff from that young rider. Makes their way uh, into you know the holding area and in front of that number one board to show their victory. And embraced by the fans and colleagues and fellow riders. Brilliant, brilliant performance there from Nelly News to cap off what has been a brilliant, brilliant opening to the season. And, uh, well, it, uh, yeah, it's just been a phenomenal race, it must be said. The AC40 rookies, race one, done and dusted. Nelly Nuth with a fantastic performance. It is time for the big men on the little bikes. The senior mini motos are moments away. And boy, oh boy, if this is the first time you're watching Fab Racing, if you're not familiar uh, with the senior mini motos, then this well, it'll be a watch to say the least. One of the best classes in terms of pure entertainment that Fab Racing has to offer. Always brilliant, brilliant action here in the senior mini motos. Matt Birkin will be starting on the pole with Will Howe in P2. Reese Gentry in third alongside Keaton Payne. Holly Harris goes off the fifth with Nick Bennett alongside. Mark Payne is seventh with Chris Yeomans in P8. Lamar Morgan in ninth. Gary Eldridge in tenth. Callum White is eleventh with Ross Michael following alongside. Jerome Richards and Isaac Greenstreet, they make up the seventh row of the grid with Steve Johns in P15 and Rob Gentry in P16. That is your grid. Uh, great to see Lamar Morgan back out on track here as well. Of course, he's been in hospital for some treatment recently. Great to see him back out here, here at Lid. And uh, once again, back on two wheels and showing us what he can do. But the senior mini motos again. If you're unfamiliar with this category, boy, oh boy, it is one to enjoy. Of course, unfortunately, uh, not seeing last year's champion Josh Birkin anywhere. Matt Birkin returns after a long, long injury. Uh, so once again, we're going to see well, we're going to have at least a weekend without the Birkin brothers once again. But it should be very, very exciting as they make their way onto the grid. It's anyone's guess what's going to happen. It's Birkin on pole, how can P2? Well, that's fine now, I suppose. Only time will tell. The five lights come on, they'll go out and we'll be underway, of course, for the first race of this season. We will indeed. It's all eyes to the flag marshal. We will point to the lights. The red lights go on. The red lights go off. And we're underway for nine laps of racing in the senior mini motos, the opening race of the season. 
for the senior Minimoto. Oh, hello. Uh, I don't think that was the signal to go. We're going to stop there again. That looked like Keaton Payne got a little bit too keen. There's a jump start, and then there's just going, you know what, I don't fancy this anymore. We're just flooring it. Let's try that again, shall we? Red lights, come on. It is lights out. We are underway. Good reaction from Will Howard, but it will be Matt Birkin that leads the way down into turn one. Reese Gentry, he'll hold on to his third place position from the grid is Keaton Payne. After that, well, I say jump start, light head of a jump start, light year of a jump start even. Uh, he holds on to P4, Holly Harrison P5. So it looks like they're all maintaining position for the time being. We've got a little bit of a change here though, further down the order. Getting slow out of the corner there and then getting a move on as well. Neck and neck coming down to the bottom end of the circuit. Now to the very fast ride. Hander, super, super close between the pair of them. But there we see that as Will Howth in P2 being followed by Reese Gentry in P3. Just behind them, Keith Payne, Holly Harris, Nick Bennett also in the conversation as well. But it will be Josh Birkin that leads the way, or Matt Birkin, should I say, that leads the way here on the opening lap of the season, crosses the line with a fantastic, fantastic lap there. Will Howth got in P2, Reese Gentry in P3. Yeah, perfect first lap, of course, and uh, able to maintain their position for the most part. No huge changes then, but still plenty of racing left to go. Uh, these guys, of course, have been uh, around for a little bit longer. They they sort of know the dynamic of a race. They've got that experience on their side. They know the cruci uh, crucialness of, uh, of longevity in a race. Hopefully that racecraft will come to fruition. Hopefully uh, we'll see some good overtakes happening because we have got a bit of a train forming uh, pretty much from third backwards. Uh, so maybe we can see a bit of a spicy battle happening. Uh, happen over there as the race progresses but so far so good for our race leaders well i don't think it's going to be very long if we've got a bit of a train bump until we start seeing some classic mini moto shenanigans from the scene so the kind of thing of grabbing the back of the bike in front and just dragging it backwards a little bit to try and keep yourself an edge or you know maybe just getting your elbows out a little bit giving each other a knock you know that's what we love in the scene in mini motos it is rough and rumble racing but it is so so exciting to watch it is still matt birkin that leads the way from howard and p2 and reese gentry on the 100 machine in p3 matt birkin leads with will howard in second looks like a will howard having just a little bit of a transponder issue at the moment he's uh currently saying he's leading the way all oh, right down there that's coming out of the opening chicane not quite sure who that is but trying to get the bike restarted bend the handlebars back into shape hopefully everything's okay managed to get going again once again but that's a real shame just a little tumble there hopefully everything is okay but it is still Matt Birkin that leads this race he is doing a phenomenal job at the moment up the front and Zach, you know, he's just wants it. We've seen it in the few races we've had today already. It seems like the, the current trend of today is just the pole sitter taking everyone to school and showing you how it's done. Well, basically, yeah. I mean, with such fairly dominant pole margins as well for the most part the leader showcasing how crucial it is really to just get a punchy start build an early margin and then just work from that build yourself a solid foundation and, th and then build upon that as the race progresses get further and further away because we are yet to see sort of a poor start from pole as such uh, so maybe when we see that we can see a bit of an interesting battle for the lead but our pole sitters have done a remarkable job just getting away early doors uh, and looking very strong uh, this is that train that I was touching on in regards to the battle for third uh, uh, of course battling away uh, as things down we've got gentry from Payne and harris at uh, three four and five running their way through the junior loop so very very close stuff particularly with the front two in this train when's this going to get spicy have to wait and see looks like lamar morgan has had an issue could you see out the comic box window he pulled it to the pit lane complaining about something on the bike and uh, I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to rejoin this race. Of course, hopefully, Lamar is able to get back out there. But that is a real shame of a way to start the season. Through goes Reese Gentry. There on, uh, yeah, Reese Gentry goes through on Will Howarth. Great stuff from the 100 machine to get past the number 96. How does Will Howarth respond as they head down the back section of the track? That was a great move by Reese Gentry to get up into second place. I'm not sure whether it was a maybe a mistake from Will Howell or maybe Gentry just got a run of the gods heading out of that chicane but great stuff he's up into P2 Howell now the hunted becomes the hunter what can he do to try and 
weasel his way back into the second podium position. We'll have to wait and see. But as they come now onto what will be four laps there to run, it's Birkin from Gentry from Howard your top three. Yeah, great stuff, of course. Birkin still able to extend that gap a little bit further out. Here's the battle, uh, I believe, the fight uh, in fourth place. Harris versus Payne. Uh, uh, of course, just in behind. Not a million miles away from that battle from P3, but uh, enough of a ways away that they're not really in contention as things stand. Bit of traffic to contend with as they run their way through turn three. Uh, back to this battle, I believe, for P2 between Gentry and, of course, Howarth just in behind. Be interesting to see what Howarth can do in terms of a response, because uh, of course, the pace is there. He's still staying with Gentry, but has he got enough to go for counter-attack? Well, only time will tell, but, you know, will Howarth evolve? He certainly would. We'll have to see if 2024 holds the same thing in store for the number 96 as they make their way round the junior section of the circuit, then back onto the final corner. And it's looking like, oh, it's a very nice run. Will Howarth got great drive. He looks to the inside, but unfortunately, front stretch is not quite long enough he has to back out of that move and once again Gentry just about holding on Gentry not really too worried about defending at the moment it would seem he's he's riding his normal lines he's you know he's not checking over his shoulder like a lot of riders do almost every other corner if there's someone on their tail he's just sticking to where he is you know, putting the bike where he normally puts it hitting his marks and you know just just riding the thing and Will Howard is you know he's looking left he's looking right just can't quite find a way through at the moment but he is very very close as they come onto the back straight he might be having a dive down the inside into the junior section no the run onto the back straight wasn't particularly strong from Howard uh, Gentry does run a little bit wide though there he runs wide once again so how again it's, it's it's really back and forth between these two one corner they're almost on top of each other and the next corner the gap widens Gentry ran really wide slam the door shut but Howard to the inside slides on through that was the mistake that Will Howarth was waiting for. Up back into second he goes as Gentry slides wide on the final corner and slides down into P3. Yeah, talk about him being a hunter. He was waiting for the opportunity to strike his prey. Did exactly that side oh, by side going through. into turn three, allowing him back through. So Gentry back into second, Howarth back down to third. I'm not entirely sure as to why I do that unless, well, Gentry just found the gap, went for it. Uh, but still, the fight for second place continues on to the penultimate lap of race one of the Senior Mini Moto class. Great stuff happening. Meanwhile, Matt Birkin, four seconds clear out in front. Lap track is to contend with as well. Harworth, I mean, he proved he can do it once. Do it yes. he, we'll have to wait to see if he's got what it takes as we head about to head on to the final lap. Uh, yeah, Will Howe, to me, absolutely let, uh, let Bruce Gentry back through there really look like he backed off and uh, just let him slide on through. But again, we also know that these senior mini motors boys, more than anything, they just love to race. Maybe there was just that, it's the first race, let's have some fun, see how we go. But here's a man who's uh, maybe not so interested in racing, more interested in going out of the front and dominating the whole thing. Although on that last lap, Matt Birkin lost, actually I think it was just over two seconds. So encountered some problems with some traffic or maybe a mistake somewhere for Matt Birkin. But, you know, he's got half a lap left to go, all things considered. I'm sure that he'll be fine, Zach. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, Matt Birkin, he's had a phenomenal race. And, you know, and just a few corners left to run, you know. He has just been absolutely superb. He really has. Sensational stuff. Matt Birkin, a little bit slower, but he's done himself the favour of building that gap early doors. He's got the final corner left to go. Victorious for race one. Indeed, he is. Matt Birkin takes the checkered flag. Wonderful ride from the number five. Matt Birkin is on the top step once again in the senior mini motos and opens the season exactly how we would have wanted to. Reese Gentry did manage to hold on to that P2 in the end with Will Howarth only two and a half tenths of away in P3. What a race we've just seen those out there, Zach. Once again, we've seen the, uh, the person from the pole running away a little bit at the front, but we've seen a great battle for the podium places there. And uh, hopefully that's a good time for the rest of the weekend for the senior mini motos. Should hopefully be, hopefully we'll get the results up uh, in just a second. There they are, Matt Burke and Victorious, but just over two seconds, not quite the full four seconds he pulled throughout the entirety of the race. But there we can see Matt Birkin ahead of Reese Gentry. Will Howarth then completes the podium. Keaton Payne from then Holly Harris complete the top five. Uh, beh uh, behind that is Mark Payne, Chris Yeoman, uh, Bennett from White and Michael too complete the top 10 here for the senior mini motos what a race it was and a great stepping stone going into the rest of the weekend indeed it was a great ride there from 
the man you see just pulling into the pit lane and shortly pulling into behind his podium. No, doesn't fancy going to the podium position. No. Oh, well, Matt Birkin's decided he's had enough or he wants to chat with someone quickly or something along those lines. But Matt Birkin has uh, set himself up very, very nicely indeed for the remaining two races this weekend. Of course, well, we only have race ones this afternoon. We've got all of the race twos and threes in all of the classes to look forward to tomorrow. So it should be very, very exciting indeed to see how it is all going to happen. But great stuff there from Birkin. Great racing action between Gentry and Howth as well as, uh, oh, that's the 147 there uh, having some issues. That is Rob Gentry. Looks like he didn't quite finish the race. And uh, yeah, Rob Gentry just comes in. But a great race there. The first race of the season for the LC40 Elites then. The riders making their way onto the grid. But as they come through, it be very, very interested. But yeah, great to be bringing you the OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship here in 2024. And well, as the riders getting ready to go out on circuit, it could be a very interesting one, Zach. Of course, this is the, uh, the premier category uh, for the uh, junior mini moto riders. Uh, of course, the LC stands for liquid cooled, but you are allowed to run your standard air cooled bike in this as well. Uh, so, you know, it's open to both. Uh, but as the riders will slowly be making their way out onto the circuit, it's looking like it's going to be a very, very interesting race as the riders get going. Yeah, many people do, in fact, actually run the uh, the air-cooled engines, maybe for a little bit more uh, reliability as such. There is freedom of choice, so whatever you do prefer uh, out on circuit. But, yeah, getting themselves underway for their first of three races, don't forget, uh, this weekend. All of the qualifiers were done today. Race ones today as well. Then we get two sets of racing action over the course of tomorrow on Sunday. Race two. Then, of course, the spotlight of the weekend that race three run no different in terms of the grid or the point scoring but that encapsulating uh, of the weekend that final race uh, the one that you want to go and definitely win but let's get through race ones first yeah shall we logan cousins starts from the pole position with mason fedrick alongside rex austin in p3 with caelan ratcliffe in p4 the third row of the grid max johnson and oliver hall with kai hawken in seventh alongside arthur rich and danny longhurst rounds out our grid of nine riders a very exciting race awaits us in the OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship Race 1. And it could be anybody's guess as to how it is all going to unfold. A very, very strong grid as we come into the start here. Riders, of course, getting their last checks. And it's time to go racing. Over to you for the race start, Zach Sweeney. Here we go, the first race of the season for the LC40 Elites. Let's see what they can do. Logan Cousins, Mason Frederick, of course, the winner of the AC40 Pros a little bit earlier on. Let's see what he can do from the front row of the grid. Lights will come on. The lights will go out in 2024. The Fab Racing OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship about to get itself underway. The riders, the adrenaline will be surging. There you can see the fire lights in uh, jump start from the second row of the grid. But oh. we are underway and racing into the first chicane. Logan Cousins able to take an early lead. Mason Frederick just tucking in behind, but immediately going for the lead to the inside of turn two. Then in towards turn number three, has to back out eventually. So far, so good for the race leader. Yeah, that looked to me like it was Caelan Ratcliffe maybe that had that little jump start moment and then hit the brakes to stop it and immediately as they stopped the lights all went out and they had to get the rows back up and go again. Here comes Mason Fedrick looking to the outside as they come down the back straight. Unfortunately, he didn't quite have the run heading into the right hander, but my oh my, is he close to the back of Logan Cousins who still leads from the pole position. Oh, a little bit of a mistake there from Fedrick as he came out of that right-hander, just dropped back ever so slightly. And, uh, looks like it's all been changed in the background. But for now, the front two, it is Logan Justin from Mason Fedrick. Oh, is that a problem? Oh, red flag. Red flag is being waved. Uh, possibly we are going to restart. Uh, we've not seen any incidents. Uh, but yeah, just been told in our ear from race control, we are going to be restarting the race after that jump start. So, all got a bit panicked there in the commentary box, but it's all fine. Uh, we didn't see any incidents. Uh, race control just decided that we are going to restart the race. Uh, clearly couldn't find any false start flags lying around, so we've just gone for the red flag instead. Some of the riders 
have however I believe made their way into the pit lane because they've just seen the red flag could be here a little while when we uh, get ourselves sorted out uh, for this one but uh, yeah red flag the restart on the race same positions and uh, that half lap of racing let's just pretend that never happened well yeah I mean uh, of course for Cousins and Frederick they both had a really really good launch uh, the, the, the one that uh, of course started on the front row that jumped is going to be like brilliant this is a saving grace this is a second chance a lifeline if you will uh, but yeah hopefully logistically everything can get sorted out as soon as possible usually you'd see the green flag with uh, a yellow chevron to indicate a false start of course uh, they've just gone for the red uh, flag just to stop the race hold it get everything sorted take a breather get back going again what it does mean is Cozens has to lead from pole again Frederick now is the second opportunity to get him off the line he does indeed no penalties to be awarded for the jump start it is a fresh restart a clean slate all the riders involved should we try doing that again shall we Zach it is time to go racing definitely for the first time in the OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship the flag marshal will point out to the lights the lights will come on and then it's time to go racing it is lights out we are underway in the opening race of the weekend a great start there from uh, that looked like it was a uh, Cousins who took the lead out there but Mason Frederick is definitely going to be challenging down into the second chicane really pushing the pole sitter getting through on the pole sitter taking advantage of Cousins running wide but Cousins is not going to say take no for an answer he's going to be pushing back he's going to be looking for a way through can he find the gap though oh yes he can he's already back into the lead brilliant racing on this opening lap behind them as well Caelan Ratcliffe holding on to P3 from Max Johnson but it is your pole sitter after briefly losing that place to Mason Fedrick. He leads from Fedrick in second. Austin in P3 with a great opening lap there. And luckily, no red flag this time, Zach. Yeah, side by side going into the final couple of corners as well. A little bit further back might well be up to Hall versus Hawk. And that's the fight for fifth. There are the two leaders crossing the line to kickstart lap number two. There's P3. That's going to Ratcliffe uh, in third. Uh, running quite nicely. A little bit of a mistake through the first chicane. Back to our leaders, though. Frederick uh, now having to nip into second place but taking a very nice line through turn number two actually able to really accelerate the, the bike off the corner and run their way in towards the hairpin is it enough to take the lead of the race definitely a look at the very least these two down each other's throats the best part of race one yeah this one could go all the way to the wire eight laps of racing remaining here in the oh logistics lc40 elite championship race one the opening round of the 2024 fab racing mini bike british championship here at the lid kart circuit a circuit that has been enjoyed on four wheels and two wheels alike for the best part now of coming up to 30 years or actually it's over 30 years now 31 years uh, this year and it is once again providing us with a treat of a race here in fab racing cousins them fastest lap of the race at 55.077 Behind him, Mason Fedrick at 55.177. Almost inseparable, the pair of them. And, uh, well, you can see the gap, uh, you know, on screen. It is very, very tight between those two. It's very, very tight between these guys as well. Rex Austin, Caelan Ratcliffe and Oliver Hall. Potentially Max Johnson getting involved as well. They're fighting for the final podium place. Oliver Hall has had enough of waiting around. He's having a look. He wants to move up now. Of course, the Fab Racing Rookies Cup champion from a few years ago. He's been slowly, slowly building himself up uh, in the uh, elder classes. Now he's decided it's time to get racing. Time to try and move forward. Not quite able to find the gap. Try and find a way through on Rackliff in front. But Rackliff in front is going to try on Rex Austin. That was super, super late from the number 96. And able to try and find a way through, though. Once again, Oliver Hall looks to the outside. Oh, oh. down! Down goes Caelan Rackham. A big low side. And tumbling over, over. A real, real shame for Caelan Rackham. Up on their feet. Is the bike okay? The handlebars look straight, but that could be it in race one for Rackliff. A real shame there. Just the front tyre giving way coming through the opening chicane but up the front it is business as normal cousins from Fedrick in first and second Fedrick's fastest lap of the race that last time out of 55.024 dead flying along these guys but that is a real shame for Caelan Wackham to go down where he did yeah that's not the way you want to start your season 
that, absolutely not. And uh, it's the smallest of mistakes as well. Nothing drastic, weren't pushing too hard at all going through that chicane, but a small mistake, front end went, then the whole bike went, unfortunately, after that. The battle continues, though, in the fight for P3, of course, between Oliver Hall and Rex Austin. Uh, they're fighting their way through still as well. Five laps left to go, and sheer talent, really, at this elite level of mini moto racing. Still plenty of racing still to come, of course, throughout the weekend, but also over the course of the next five laps. Cousins from Frederick, still four tenths of a second. This battle right here, you can see, not really separated by too much. You're looking at around about three tenths to go for a move, so a little bit more time needs to be made if Austin wants to go for the podium. Well, there's still five laps left to run in this race, realistically four and a half. Uh, you know, there is time. There is time for Frederick to try and find his way through on the leaders. There's also time for the likes of Oliver Hall to try and you know, find his way and push forward as we uh, head down into turn one. The, uh, the scene of the accident for Caelan Ratcliffe just moments ago looks like uh, he will not be rejoining this race, unfortunately, for Ratcliffe. But up the front, and it's really, really tight. It looks like Fedrick is slightly better over the first half of the circuit. And then uh, over the second half of the circuit, Logan Cousins just has the advantage. I mean, it's, it's almost like you see the gap that he pulls out, the drive that Logan Cousins is getting down the straights is absolutely ginormous. He's, uh, you know, just getting a great exit out of the corners. And you can see here the gap just extends down the straight. You know, he's flying in a straight line. Fedrick, though, doing everything he can in the corners. I mean, look, he's almost hanging off the side of the bike, Mark Marquette style, leaving nothing on the table. I mean, well, when we spoke to him earlier, he said that Mark Marquez is an inspiration for his, and it's clear to see in his riding style as well, and it's clear to see in his performances as he had a look to the inside. But once got unable to make a move, once again getting really close on the brakes into the second part of the opening chicane as well. It could be anybody's guess, Zach. Who's going to be on the top step of the podium come the checkered flag? Yeah, it looks like Frederick really is able to carry that apex speed, keep that minimum speed up. And of course, in that acceleration zone as well. Able, you can see they're off the exit of turn five. Able to get the initial run and looks to the outside. And then Cousins, once the, the the bike has had an opportunity to accelerate, build itself up again, he just pulls that gap. Then they slow themselves down again, and that's where Frederick can close the gap. Unfortunately, if you haven't got straight line speed, particularly here at Lid, good luck making an overtake. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a track where it's all about momentum, all about keeping your middle of speed up as high as possible. And you know, well. Fedrick is doing a great job of keeping his speed up in the corners when it hits the straight stuff. Uh, Cousins is just absolutely fast, but there is some traffic here. This could present an opportunity for Fedrick because Cousins has caught it in a bad location. Coming through the opening chicane, they're going to have to try and split the traffic. Oh, no. Fedrick had to back out and go to the other side. That is going to cost him a little bit of time. We're on the penultimate lap of the opening race, the OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship here. Cousins still lead from pole. Fedrick still in second from second on the grid, but he's lost a little bit of time there. He's going to realistically have maybe one or two more chances to try and make the move, but it's going to require some real, real pace here over this last lap and a half. Yeah, he's going to have to give it absolutely everything if he wants to take the top step. Of course, it's good to see Frederick under a little bit of competition after what we saw in the pros a little bit earlier on, where he's able to catapult himself and, uh, of course, take a fairly dominant victory. But now he's under pressure and is the one on the back foot to start what is going to be the final lap of the race. You can hear the cheers actually uh, from the sidelines cheering on Frederick to maybe go for move. And a look there through the exit of turn two, but not enough as they then run their way into the next chicane, of course. Yes, he's close and he's tantalizingly close. Again, another look on that acceleration zone after a medium speed corner, but Cousins just has the pull and that's exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, this could be last chance saloon for Mason Fedrick. What has he got in his back pocket? Can he produce some magic moments, miracles even, late on in this race? The wind is picking up and the tension is as well. Can Fedrick find a way through as we head into the junior section? for the final time in this opening race of the LC40 Elite class. It looks like Cousins is just going to hang on as they make it to the final corner unless Fedrick pulls some magic out of the hat. Unfortunately, he can't. It will be Logan Cousins who takes the victory in the opening race of the season. A fine ride putting off the fast-charging Mason Fedrick to hold on to the top step of the podium.
But man, oh man, what a battle we've seen between those two, only separated by just under four tenths of a second at the line at the end of the race. Oliver Hall will complete the podium. A great, great result from Oliver Hall. But it is Logan Cousins that takes victory. Mason Fedrick in P2 with Oliver Hall rounding out our podium in P3. Rex Austin was fourth with Max Johnson in fifth. Kai Hawken was sixth. Arthur Richard seventh. Danny Longhurst was eighth. And Caleb Racklin did actually manage to finish in P9. Managed to reach on the track. But what a great way to open the OH Logistics LC40 Elite Championship here in 2024. Of course, they'll be back for more races later on tomorrow. But a great battle we've seen for the lead. This paints a brilliant picture for this entire season, frankly. It really does. I mean, of course, Cousins, Frederick, they'll line up on the front row together for races two and three uh, over tomorrow. So we get effectively that all over again. Hopefully, anyway, great racing. Maybe Frederick's going to be able to sort those straight line speed issues. Maybe mount a bit more of a challenge on Cousins. Coming up, though, the PB140s. Indeed it is. What a race we've just seen in the OH Logistics. LC40 Elite Championship. We'll see the riders coming in to the, uh, the podium boards now. Great first race. Logan Cousins receives the applause of the crowd here. You can see there. What a great little view we've got down there into the podium. I can fly on the wall looking down. There comes Oliver Hall. A great performance from that young man to get into P3 as well. You know, what he's, he told us earlier was kind of his, uh, his last ditch to win another Mini Moto title before he goes onto the geared uh, Metrikit bikes next year. But a great performance there from Ratcliffe. Uh, or Cousins even, should I say. A great race overall. Race two will be later on. Pit bike 140s time. This is one of the ones that the, the crowd has eagerly been awaiting for. Always a show put on display. And of course, always excitement along the way. Yeah, very much is. Of course, Chris Wells, reigning champion, taking to the pole position. Uh, Jamie King Mayer in P3 as well. Lucas Brown uh, sandwiched between the pair of them in P2, uh, with Joshua French completing the front two rows. Sacked bits of talent, of course, out there. Very, very close in qualifying as well. Let's see what they can do for race one. We'll have to wait and see. It's reigning champion Chris Wells going off the pole with Lucas Brown on the AMR number seven in P2. Pit bike Sonic Jamie King starts in P3. Can the three-time champion make his way back onto the top step of the podium for the first time since 2021? Joshua French alongside with Sean Whitaker in P5. Keaton Payne is sixth with Noah Guillory in P7th. And Bailey Lawrence is P8. She had a great improvement across last year. Let's see if she continue that form into 2024. Bradley Ferreira and Thomas Dudson, they ran out the top 10 with Kieran Mandeville and Ben Ridgewell following. Harry Thomson is 13th with Ashley Powell on 14th, Shannon King 15th, Robert Bordock in 16th, Paul King is 17th alongside Dan French and Bradley Powell and Michael Collis rounding out our 20 rider grid. It is almost time to go for what many see as one of the highlights of the weekend. The pit bike 140s never fail to disappoint. Always great racing, always laughs. And uh, sometimes if you were watching at Three Sisters last year, they'll shoot each other explicit messages while out on the racetrack as well, just as they can. It is always brilliant, brilliant stuff. And the riders are getting ready to go now. 11 laps of hard racing to look forward to here at Lid. The wind is definitely picking up. You can see the flag marshals, red flag just flapping now in the breeze. It's not ridiculously strong, but it is certainly stronger than it was earlier. The sea breeze is picking up. Over to you, Zach Sweeney. Chris Wells, Lucas Brown, the front row. PB 140, the wind is picking up. So much tension, so much anticipation ahead of their first race start of this season. Uh, I think a couple of people at the back just trying to sort themselves out into the appropriate grid slots, but now we are ready. The fire lights will come on. The reigning champion looking to take back to the mantle. We are up and running. Wheelies across the field, side by side momentarily, going into turns one and two. But so far, so good for Chris Wells. An early attack, though, from Lucas Brown as they attack in towards the second chicane of turns three and four. Chris Wells able to assume that early lead, doing exactly what he needs to do from pole position. Lucas Brown, though, eyeing up that race lead. 
He is indeed. We saw there that was Joshua French who uh, dumped the clutch a little bit too fast at the start and just shot the front of the bike up in the air. Makes for a great screensaver, but it's uh, not great when you're trying to start a race. But it is Chris Wells that leads from Lucas Brown and Jamie King. One, two, and three. Who else would it be? King to the inside, coming into the final corner. Can't quite make the move work. But it is the number one, followed by the number seven, followed by the number 76. Lucas Brown, fastest lap on the opening lap, 46.846 to open the score. And Joshua French managed to hold on, actually, uh, to that P4 in the end. Keaton Payne, though, uh, shooting down the order. He's lost, gone from P6 to P7. But apart from that, it's all been fairly steady away, actually, uh, in the open few laps. But it's very, very tight. I mean, look at this front three. You couldn't fit a cigarette paper between them, Zach. You really couldn't. As close as they come, of course, Jamie King looking to take, of course, if you say, his first podium in a very, very long time. Let's see if he's able to go and do that. Looking in very good stead to go and attack. Maybe Maybe he's not going to settle for a podium. Maybe he wants to taste the victory again. Ah, oh, well, it's the tale as old as time. Jamie King in the top step of the podium. When will they get back together? We'll have to wait and see. Maybe today is the day, maybe it isn't the day, because in front of him are two spectacular riders. You've got reigning champion Chris Wells, not on a full-time campaign this year. He's just here for a bit of fun and, uh, well, quote-unquote, to show him how it's done. But he is not running the full year this year. Uh, Lucas Brown, of course, uh, in P2 currently, uh, he is also not necessarily running a full season. He comes and goes as his schedule allows. Jamie King, though, uh, this is the best chance that he's got this year. He's uh, one of the, the real old guard of the pit bike panic. Uh, you know, the three-time champion. He's been around for years and years and years. And, uh, you know, over the last few years, we've seen a lot of talented riders move on to other things or simply not have the time to come and do pit bike racing anymore. Jamie King, this could be the best chance he's had in years to pick up that fourth pit bike title and get another win. The first one since since 2021 but there is reigning champion Chris Wells under huge pressure from Lucas Brown at the moment Brown with the fastest lap of the race a 43.884 absolutely flying along at the moment is Brown that currently can't find a way past that number one no he can't quite but he's doing exactly what he needs to do we've seen as we were touching on in other categories with how easily the pole sitter was able to get away and away and away from the start of the race Lucas Brown is hammering on that pressure in fact actually going to look for the lead into the final corner nicely done the up and under not quite there for the reigning champion the number seven through for the lead that is how it is done Lucas Brown brilliant stuff into the final corner to take the lead and now just seven laps left to run in this race but Chris Wells he's still hot on the heels of the number seven the 76 Jamie King as well he's dropped a little bit further back over that previous lap I think there may have been a mistake in there for pit bike Sonic but he's still fighting still trying to hold on to this front pair further back in the field Joshua French holding on to P4 Bailey Lawrence great stuff from her up into P6 at the moment from 8th in the grid but there is your race leader Lucas Brown with the fastest lap of the race so far as well now though counting some lap traffic and of course we saw traffic causing some issues in the mini motor races we've been looking at earlier on now the bikes are a lot faster and a lot bigger this is where traffic really really comes into play here this is all you see there chris wells in the background just so i saying i'm not sure it's quite a commentator's curse that one but oh, just traffic it causes chaos it completely flips race on its head because the next thing you know lucas brown could have an incident like that and suddenly you know he's down in second or third like that it ebbs and flows it doesn't take a lot for a lot to happen small mistakes pretty big consequences after them as well but i can sort of empathize with what chris wells was doing there you need to follow the race leader through it's so easy for them to get away so easy for gaps to open through sort of bouts of traffic he needed to stay with them and minimize the amount of bikes between him and of course that race lead uh, of course lucas brown able to assume an early lead and build up to just over a second now clear of chris wells let's see if he's able to hold that over the course of the next five laps uh, Jamie King, of course, running really, really nicely in P3. Dropped off the back of the two leaders. Sort of suspended. Three seconds in front, two and a half behind. Seems like the podium's safe. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that Jamie may have just backed off a little bit. I think, you know, I think Lucas Brown and Chris Wells have both collectively turned up the wick a little bit. And at the same time, Jamie King just turned it down. I think he's seen them start to push a bit more. He's thinking, 
I know I can't quite match that pace right now, and I want to risk getting hurt earlier this weekend, but if you're going to settle back into a rhythm, take home a nice podium. Smart thinking from the three-time champion, Pit Bike Sonic again this year. He really wants to mount the championship challenge. Another fastest lap from Chris Wells, a 43 point two one eight he is flying along at the moment is chris wells and he's closing back into lucas brown in the lead of the race as well but jamie king at the moment like you said zach he's just brought it back a little bit he's riding safe just hitting his marks at this point he's got a two second or he's got a foot uh, yeah two and a half second gap behind him he's now got a five second gap in front of him he's uh yeah he's really just pulling himself back in and just letting himself Relax a little bit as there we see the leaders once again having to negotiate traffic. If you just catch a slow rider in the wrong place, Ooh. you can make or break your race. Chris Wells had a thought about it into the opening chicane. Had to think about it, should I say. But um, decided against it at seemingly the very last minute. With three laps left to go. He's quite happy with the pace he's got just to sit behind Lucas Brown and wait for the gap to appear. We've got quite a sunny day here in Lid, of course, and that means the shadows very, very prominent. I think Wills is able there to just sort of feel the inside, and of course, Lucas Brown is going to be seeing that shadow move around, hearing the, the, the sound of the, of the pit bike behind him as well shift around. He knows full well that the reigning champion is breathing down his neck. Inside line, of course, as they run their way to the final corner. Chris Wells once again assumes the race deed. He might run a bit wide, though. Oh! Goodness me! Fight for the lead! Lucas Brown stays ahead. Oh, a little bit of a wave there from Chris Wells. Lucas Brown went back. Don't think he was too impressed with that one. But ultimate lap of the race, and this one just got physical. Lucas Brown and Chris Wells. There was a slight bit of contact. Wells had to get well out of the throttle, tip the bike back up in order to avoid a shot between the pair of them. Now more traffic. Here we go. What a run out of that corner from Chris Wells. Oh, once again, hard on the brake. You saw the back of the bike squirreling, complaining, protesting as Lucas Brown has to go the long way round. Coming into the final corner now, Chris Wells has lost a significant chunk of time there with the traffic. That may well could be it, but one lap to go. Oh, once again, Chris Wells getting caught up by the traffic. I think, I think that could be it for this one, but there's still one lap left to go. One more tour of the Lincard circuit for Lucas Brown and Chris Wells. But man, oh man, that got dramatic there for a moment. Yeah, it just goes to show how quickly things can change. Chris Wells, this time last lap or a lap and a half ago, was looking very, very strong, leading the race. Now he's got no hope. 1.1 seconds behind. Sensational stuff, of course, from this man of Lucas Brown. He's got a couple more corners left to go to take a sensational first victory of the season. The number seven machine, of course, taking the fight to the reigning champion. We'll see the leader across the line. He didn't quite get the fastest lap of the race, but one more corner to negotiate, and he will take the checkered flag. Race one of the PB140 Zero Lid goes the way of Lucas Brown after a sensational battle with the reigning champion. Beautiful stuff. Typical, typical pit bike stuff. Yeah, typical pit bike stuff. And fairly typical Lucas Brown as well. Another fantastic performance. A little bit of luck on his side this time. Chris Wells late in the race. Looked like he had the pace. The two competitors sharing a handshake there. Um, but yeah, Wells just got caught up by the, uh, by the traffic there. And that was that one done and done. Lucas Brown takes a brilliant victory. Chris Wells has to settle for second after some poor luck and nearly contact between the pair of them. But Jamie King rallying out the podium. Joshua French was P4 with Sean Whitaker in P5. Keaton Payne managed to get through Bailey Lawrence from P6 late in the race with Bradley Ferreira up into P8. Thomas Dudson was ninth with Ben Ridgewell in 10th, Perry Thompson in 11th and Robert Bulldog in P12. Ashley Powell was 13th with Paul King alongside. Kieran Mandelow in P15. Shannon King finished in 16th place. Dan French was 17th, Noah Guillory in 18th, Bradley Powell was 19th and Michael Collis was rounded out half field in P20. Race one, absolutely superb. Well, as all the races are in pit by 140s, if you're new to Fab Racing, get used to more stuff like this because it's always like this. And Jamie King, well, he is on his own podium. He was the one who uh, helped source the manufacturing of these podium boards, and uh, he's the one who's come through and uh, managed to come up with that. So uh, Jamie King getting to use his own things. Great stuff to see there. But, of course, we've got two more fantastic races to look forward to. Uh, in the uh, pit bike 140s, of course. Two more races to look forward to on Sunday. Race one awaits 
for the Mini GP50 in association with King's Two Wheel Center Championship. We are moments away from the riders making their way out onto the circuit. Well, this is one of the ones that the whole paddock is going to be watching. It's you know the metric kit Mini GP classes. They are you know seen as the darling of fab racing. You know this is where the riders want to be. For they make their way into the RNG British Talent Cup. They make their way into Red Bull Rookies and over into Junior GP in the European Talent Cup. It all comes down to this. A big grid of riders here today as well. 14 out on circuit. It's sure to be exciting. I think so. It should be a, a lot of fun. And uh, funny you mention that. Of course, the the natural stepping stone. You work your way through the mini motors. You do the rookies, the pros, the elites, etc. Uh, and then you make your way here then into uh, broader things in Europe. Frankie Watson, though, taking the pole position ahead of Travis Shaw. Bradley Curtis, Taylor Tomlinson uh, taking to the second row ahead of Brian Johnson that completes the top five. Matthew Thomas from Seth Hayward. Archie Hooper completes row four ahead uh, of Riley Paisley. Sebastian Gavzlowski uh, there rounding off the top ten. Mason Frederick in P11 from Daisy Polden. Callum Maxwell and Harris Watson, the top seven rows. Let's see what's in store for race one. Have to wait and see. Moments away, final corner of the sighting lap is done and dusted. 14 riders await to get going here in the Mini GP50 in association with King's Two Wheel Centre. It's going to be very, very interesting to say the least. There we see making his way into his grid slot, Byron Johnson in P5. Waiting for Frankie Watson, there he is, to uh, take his pole position slot on that number 14 machine. Last checks with the roving marshals in the uh, yellow high vis. Of course, a big thank you to all the marshals here this weekend, both the roving marshals in the yellow high vis and the circuit side marshals uh, in the orange. We can't go racing without them. We're about to go racing here at Lid for the first round of the season in the 50s championship. It is all eyes to the lights. Lights out, we are underway. It looked like a few people thought about getting a jump start there, but down into turn one. Looked like Travis Shaw actually got a really, really, uh, not Travis Shaw, it looks like a, should I say, yeah, get a really great start there coming through here. But as we get continue to get going down through the opening few corners, uh, heading round, wow, what a great start that was indeed, Travis Shaw, who looks like they got away really, really strongly there on the number four machine. As we continue to go around onto the back straight row, that is Byron Johnson putting up an offensive. That looks like it's from Sebastian Gazlowski, who has managed to slide on through, it appears. So great stuff there. As we see action everywhere you look throughout the field coming through. Great stuff there, though. Frankie Watson, I believe. No, it is indeed Travis Shaw who will lead the opening lap. Frankie Watson will be in P2. Further down the grid, Matthew Thomas up into P4 with Bradley Curtis rounding out a podium places so fair. It looks possible that uh, possibly Matthew Thomas may have ever so slightly got a jump start. He certainly rolled forward quite a lot, so the stewards might be having a word with them after this one. But they didn't go uh, before the lights went out, just rolled forward quite a lot. So maybe a bit of an issue there at the start. We'll wait and see. But a great start from Travis Shaw there to get into the lead at the start. Yeah, it really was. Able to extend the gap to just over a second. The way they do these starts, though, of course, they've got to keep the revs up naturally so the bike doesn't bog down at the start. Of course, these are geared bikes, so they have got a clutch and they can hold it at a bike point. Similar to sort of your road car, I suppose. They hold it at that bike point. It's in gear. It's ready to go. But naturally, there is a little bit of give. It will start to roll and creep. It's all about that skill of holding it. Then as the lights go out, you dump the clutch, you raise the revs, and you allow the bike to go. That's why we saw a number of people actually the bike lift up because all that power go into the rear wheels. It's difficult. It's a, it's a balancing act, of course, if, particularly if sort of it's their first season doing uh, geared bikes as such. It's a learning curve. It's the first round. They'll learn. Yeah, I'm sure they will, but we'll have to wait and see anyway. Stewards are having a look, having a look to the inside as well. Is Bradley Curtis on? Uh, that looks to be Byron Johnson. He was uh, having, oh sorry, that was Byron Johnson, should I say, having a look on Matthew Thomas on the 47. It's still having a look. Almost pushing the 47 machine out very wide. It's 47 versus 37, 37 to the inside. Oh, almost contact front wheel to rear wheel. That is as close as you could even possibly imagine between Matthew Thomas and Byron Johnson. And now that's invited Taylor Tomlinson to have a go as well for the, oh, Byron Johnson, super late on the brakes. Great move there from the number 37 to get up into uh, P3. That would be unbelievable stuff there from him. 
But wow, wow, what a move from Byron Johnson on Matthew Thomas up into P4. Tomlinson behind as well, thinking, looking to try and make a move. This is brilliant racing here with seven laps left to run. Yeah, we still get to enjoy it for a little while. Yeah, the 37 then leading this train. That, of course, is Byron Johnson picking his way up nicely into fourth place. What sort of a counter-attack can we see from Matthew Thomas, who, of course, is now demoted to P5? We've seen the raceability, though, of Lids. You definitely can get some moves done. Fairly easy to follow as well, provided you have got that top-end speed. Most people should be running sort of the, a similar sprocket team blank, so the gear ratio should be vastly the same. And there we go, a look of a counter-attack going into that final chicane, thinking about the move was Matthew Thomas. Not quite enough, though, to seal the deal. No, not quite enough. Oh, there was a rider down in the background there. Oh, someone's gone down. Who was that? I'm not entirely sure. That may have been... That looks like that's the number uh, 15, it looks like, or something like that. But, yeah, probably there for someone there. Uh, down the back of the pack. We'll get that confirmed for you. That is shortly, but good to see that they're up on their feet and they're seemingly okay. Oh, it's the 151 of Seth Hayward that's gone down. So, uh, yeah, that's a real shame for him. Yellow flags will be out in this section of the race. And that's just coming uh, through this far section here. So he's obviously lost the bike uh, on the tip into the right uh, coming down the back section. So a real shame there for Seth Hayward. Uh, that is no way to start your season. And uh, hopefully we can see him back out in race two and race three tomorrow and uh, maybe try and push forward and get some strong results to make up a disappointing way to open the season. But with five laps left to go, Travis Shaw leads by simply a tenth of a second from Frankie Watson in P2. The four and the number 14 are neck and neck up the front of the field. Bradley Curtis in P3, some five seconds back. Fastest lap of the race currently going to Frankie Watson. A 43.089, ridiculously quick lap times being set around here. At Lid. This battle that we're watching here for P4, Byron Johnson, Matthew Thomas, Taylor Tomlinson, nothing separating these guys. And here is nothing separating these guys either. The battle for the lead rages on. Four laps left to run. It is Travis Shaw who started P2 from Frankie Watson, who started in P1. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Still a little bit of this race left to go. Frankie Watson showcasing that he's got the pace he just needs to go and get. Uh, of course, that leads of the race back. Still plenty of opportunities left to go and get it. There he is. You can see, of course, 43.089. Only three tenths of a second there or thereabouts set uh, off the lap record set by Marco Holt this time last year. Pace is remarkably quick, even with the little bit of a headwind that we've got here at Lid today. For the number 14, of course, very, very close through the very, very fast final corner as well. Almost double apex. You go in wide, cut back from an apex-ish, and then try and get that drive on this run into turns one and two. Shaw doing a brilliant job, though, of staying to his marks, not really too worried about what's going on behind him, just focused on riding that bike as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Neck and neck between the pair of the leaders. Nothing to separate them. The four and the 14. Frankie Watson, well, last time, I mean, just how close are those lap times? They are leaving nothing on the table. This is pulling out all of the stops and then some from Shaw and Watson up the front of the pack on the run down to the final corner. It's a good run there from Frankie Watson, but not enough to have a look into the final corner, making their way through these metric hit mini GP50 bikes. Just so fast, trying to Ritlin. Look how close Travis Shaw was to the uh, going off track there into turn one. He is really using all of the track and then then some as far as he can get away with before he starts to put the rubber on the green stuff at the side of the circuit. Right now, Frankie Watson, though, is holding on in P2. Can he try and find a way through? Not quite yet. One and a half laps left to go. It's anybody's guess out of these two who's going to finish on the top step. But right now, Travis Shaw is doing everything he can to stay in front. As that lap count continues to decrease, the tension begins to build, the excitement goes up, and the desperation with that as well skyrockets. So Frankie Watson, one more tour of the car circuit to go. Each corner that goes past is one less opportunity to win this race. It is indeed. What can Frankie Watson do to try and get in front? Can Travis Shaw hold him behind? Oh, big one. Oh, big mistake there from Travis Shaw. Is this the opportunity for Frankie Watson? He was not quite able to capitalize. And with just the back section to go, Frankie Watson may be ruining that moment when he didn't squeeze past. Yeah. 
maybe a bit of regret there. Maybe his golden opportunity wasted. One more corner left to go. A look of intent maybe from Watson, but not enough. Travis Shaw is going to round the final corner here at Lidcart Circuit. Unless something drastic happens, will be victorious for race one of the Mini GP 50 in association with Kings Two Wheel Centre. Sensational stuff to kickstart this weekend and a remarkable victory. Very, very close fight at the front once again. Oh, brilliant racing, separated by 13 hundredths of a second at the line. Great stuff. And, well, I say they were separated by 13 hundredths seconds at the line. Matthew Thomas and Taylor Tomlinson for P5, separated by three thousandths at the check and flag. Unreal. Travis Shaw takes the win with Frankie Watson in P2. Bradley Curtis was third and Byron jo Johnson in P4. Matthew Thomas in P5 with Taylor Tomlinson managing to just miss out on P6. Sebastian Gozlowski, great ride from him to P7 with Riley Paisley in eighth, Archie Hooper ninth and Callum Maxwell rounding out our top ten. We also had Daisy Polder and Harris Watson 11th and 12th. Unfortunately, we lost Seth Hayward and Mason Bedrick in that run. So only 12 finishes in the opening round of the Mini GP50 in association with Kings 2 Wheel Centre Championship. Frankie Watson, that is going to be a happy man tonight. A great way to get his season going with a hard and fought and well-earned victory in the opening race of the year here at the Lake Cart Circuit, nestled in the south coast of Kent. Brilliant, brilliant racing action. Takes the applause from the crowd as well and enjoying the moment. Great stuff from the pair of them. Frankie Watson did a fantastic job there. Into P2 though, Travis Shaw as well. Awesome, awesome racing. Moto Team Time here at Lid. The first Moto Team race of the year is just a moment away. And boy, oh boy, are we excited in the commentary box. It's one of the, well, the most difficult championships to wrap your head around. If you're new to Fab Racing, we'll try and run through the, uh, the complexities of it, shall we say. But nonetheless, it is exciting stuff. Nonetheless, uh, it's exciting stuff. And uh, you know, with two classes to look forward to as well, it could be very, very exciting. You can see the wind picking up, you know, hair starting to flap in the breeze. You can hear it pounding against our camera microphone as well. It's, uh, yeah, the uh, weather started off nice. It's still warm, but it's a bit windy. That sea breeze getting a bit choppy out there, I can imagine. But Moto Team just a few moments away. There we see. One of our riders getting ready to go out. Of course, Motor Team, we're just waiting for a few more of the riders to make their way to the pit lane, and then uh, we'll get going and get out there for the opening race of the season in this class. Of course, two more uh, races to come tomorrow for all the classes, not just Motor Team, but still, the excitement is building in the air. That is the 01 of Sean Whitaker getting ready to head out onto the circuit getting ready to get going he'll start from second on the grid starting on the pole position is Will Howth, one of two open class riders that we have on this grid the riders then heading out onto the circuit for the first motor team race of the year it is Will Howth in the moto team open class who starts from pole Sean Whitaker in the Moto Team Standard Class in P2. Team Acme Racing in P3 with Ben O'Keefe alongside. Harrison O'Keefe is fifth with Team Ernie the Badger in P6. Madison Martlew in seventh and Gary O'Keefe is P8. And Kieran Evans, our only other open class rider aside from Will Howe. Uh, he starts at P9 after not setting uh, a lap in qualifying two due to a, a mechanical issue. And uh, I believe that mechanical issue was there in P1. He was able to set a lap time, uh, but uh, just for was nowhere competitive enough of course if you sat at home fancying joining fab racing you know this is the cheapest form of motorsport uh in the uk uh that's on offer you know it is literally you buy a dirt cheap bike you whack a racing fairing on it and off you go it is always entertaining of course the cost is incredibly incredibly low the cheapest form of motorsport available in the uk and it's always incredibly incredibly fun as well there is the pole sitter 
Will Howarth, he's already had a great race today in the Sydney Mini Motos. Let's see Zach Sweeney, what he can do out here today. Only one of two open class bikes, but nonetheless looking very, very strong this weekend. He is indeed. The lights then about to come on to the gantry. Will Howarth, Sean Whitaker, the front row behind that team at from Ben O'Keefe. One, two, three, and four. Another race here at Lid about to get itself underway. The Moto team take to the circuit. They get the signal, the all clear. The lights will come on, the lights will go off. A bit of a tentative start actually from pole position. A very slow start from Will Howarth then gets absolutely swallowed up. Going into turn number one, but does enough. A short run into the first chicane, able to do enough to retain the lead. And now already trying to pull away. Seems very tame actually for the majority of the field. Sean Whitaker settling into second then from the number eight team at me racing in P3. Slow start as well uh, from the majority of those at the back as well. But well, a very, very close, very, very scary moment, it must be said for the pole sitter. Yeah, something something must have gone wrong there. You know, Will Howarth is normally exceptional on the starts, really, really good on the reactions, but, you know, whether the, the, the clutch, the bite pump is just all over the place, or may, maybe he did you know, just make a mistake, but as well, downshifting, and the bike looks really unstable, so I'm wondering if there's some sort of potential clutch issue there, because he's really losing time on the brakes when he's downshifting, but, you know, coming onto the straight, he's fast as ever, but that bike does not look particularly stable, but it is Will Howard that leads the way Sean Whitaker P2 overall and leading the way in the standard class uh, Harrison O'Keefe a great start to get up into P3 overall P2 and standard head of team Acme Racing so great stuff from one of the O'Keefe camp there really brilliant racing from all of the riders out on the grid but it's currently how that leads the way overall leads the way in the open class Whitaker leads the way in the standard class there we do see uh, that is uh, Harrison O'Keefe and team Acme Racing fighting for second place in the standard class. There is your race leader, Will Howard, already starting to lay down the ball. But Sean Whitaker not letting him go just yet. He's keeping on the tail, although it's, you know, it's a bit of a distance between the pair of them. He's still, you know, keeping him honest. He's just reminding him he's there. Touch and distance. Uh, not close enough to go for the move as of yet, but still definitely able to strike within that range. Of course, they are technically in two separate races, of course, the open versus the standard, but... They're still out there to have fun. They still want to have a race. Here's a battle as well. A little bit further down might well be uh, Tim Early in the Badger versus Ben O'Keefe going in to the hairpin, of course, the back end of the circuit. That's turn number five. Then into the next chicane, able to get ahead uh, and nicely done in to fifth. Still Will Howarth leading the way, extending that gap, though. Just over a second back to Sean Whitaker. Harrison O'Keefe as well, about 3.2 backs. Very close as well as they run their way towards the chicane. I actually think uh, this is that battle for P2. The 01, of course, of Sean Whitaker battling away now so he can't actually focus his attention forward he's too busy sort of kind of metaphorically looking over his shoulders there's the 119 versus the 64 that's team Ernie in the badger versus ben o'keefe so a uh, couple of battles uh, brewing up with eight laps left to go here for race one of moto team here for fab racing minibike british championships will have seems to be taking off in the distance but that doesn't mean there aren't other fights around the track as well as we touched on that battle uh, for second then also at uh, the fight for fourth 119 under a ton of pressure from ben o'keefe who is breathing down his neck going into the next chicane not quite close enough to really seal the deal but definitely very very close indeed in maybe going for it it's like we were touching on a second ago ross really touching distance but not quite enough for the move yeah i mean it's i always said this one thing to catch the bike in front another thing to overtake uh you know but Again, it's, they're, they're at that stage where, you know, you're certainly catching. And actually, as I say that, oh, Harrison O'Keefe got a great run out of, uh, or should I say Ben O'Keefe even, uh, got a great run out of the final corner and sent a massive dive to the inside. Unfortunately, uh, didn't quite come to profit, but still a great move on attempt to move there by Ben O'Keefe. Um, see, this is this is you know, what I refer to as touch and distance, as we can see on screen now. Team Acme Racing, the number eight, Harrison O'Keefe, the number 65. There is nothing to separate these two as they come onto the back straight. Really, really close between the number eight and the number 65 machine. Unfortunately, Harrison O'Keefe just not quite able to find a way through. But he's still keeping him very, very honest indeed, as you, we said earlier. Still very, very close to the back. Of course, uh, Team Atman Racing are registered uh, as the number eight bike. Uh, but of course, they do have the number one plate on uh, as a result of winning the Open Class Championship last year. 
Um, and uh, but of course, you know, Sean Whitaker as the O1, the champion of the standard class. Uh, for whatever reason, he's showing up as the one in the uh, in the um, oh yeah in the uh, in the timing screens. Um, but right now, six laps left to run. And as it stands, it is Will Howth leading the way overall and in the open class. Sean Whitaker in P2 leading the way in the standard class. Team Acme Racing and Harrison O'Keefe, they round out the standard class podium. Uh, Kieran Evans currently P9 overall, but he's still going to pick up uh, a lot of points for finishing second in the uh, in the open class. So, you know, turn up, get points. That seems to be the, uh, the, the deal of the day for Kieran Evans. And fair play, why wouldn't you, you know? And he's uh, having fun out there on a lovely Saturday afternoon ride on a motorbike as well. Can't go too wrong with that. Easy podium, a lot of fun down here in Lid. Not bad going, I suppose. Uh, uh, and again, it's not actually costing that much to get it because it's one of the cheapest forms of entry into motorsport. Perfect grassroots entry for those looking to get themselves into the motorcycle racing world from both a young age and, of course, those in their late teens moving forward. There is a lot of stepping stones, a lot of career progression uh, here in Fab Racing. So many graduates move on into the higher tiers of motorcycle racing and the vast majority of them start right here. So if you do want to get yourself involved, definitely look into it. Does doesn't have to be anything fancy, just get yourself out on track. Everyone starts somewhere, and for a lot of people in UK motorcycle, motorcycle racing, it's right here. There's our race leader in the motor team uh, open class, of course, Will Howard, looking very, very strong, that 96 machine, commanding from what was a, an initially pretty poor start from pole but he's converted into a very, very dominant first race. Yeah, I'll have to, we'll have to try and grab Will later and uh, you know, ask him you know, when the racing's all done today, what went on, because to me, that, that seemed like there was some sort of issue with the bike. It's the, the way it just didn't go to start like that. I mean, obviously, he's recovered incredibly well. As uh, we see there, some traffic holding up Sean Whitaker just a little bit. But, um, yeah, just for whatever reason, it just the thing just didn't go at the line. But, you know, he's recovered very, very well. Three laps left to go. He's uh, three and a half seconds uh, up the road on, you know, second place overall. He's a lap up on uh, his only competitor in the open class as well now. Or uh, two laps up, should I say. He's doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. In the standard class, uh, as I said just a moment ago, it's all very much similar. Sean Whitaker leads the way. Currently P2 overall. Team Acme Racing in P3 and Harrison O'Keefe in P4. Team Ernie the Badger in P5. Team Ben O'Keefe P6. Madison Martin in P7. And Gary O'Keefe in P8. Great to see the O'Keefe turning up once again. They've become firm fan favourites across 2023 after you know, just turning up with a whim. They saw, you know, they wanted to get involved. They all love riding bikes and, you know, saw just how, how cheap it is to get involved in Moto Team. You know, the fun that you can have. They turned up having never even raced in their life and now, you know, they're really part of the Fab Racing Paddock community and uh, really well liked. And, you know, just really nice guys as well. You know, I remember speaking to them for the first time. Uh, a funny bunch of guys as well. And, uh, you know, they just love turning up and going racing, which is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's what, you know, things like Moto Team are all about. It's about turning up, you know, having some fun, going racing on a very, very, you know, on, on you know, a very small budget. But Warhouse is turning up. Now, while others are maybe thinking about more just having fun, Warhouse is turning up and thinking purely about dominating once again. He is, yeah, fastest lap of the race that last time by as well. 46.587, uh, which was just under three tenths of a second, or just under four tenths of a second quicker than the 01 machine of Sean Whitaker. One more tour of lid circuit, of course, for Will Howarth, who took pole position in sensational fashion. He's got a couple more corners left to go. He'll be able to take that 96 to the first victory of the season. He will indeed. Will Howarth holds the lap record here under the old Moto Team regulations, some three seconds faster than his current machine under these new regulations. He's continuing to show why he absolutely loves this circuit. One bend to go, and it is victory and jubilation for the number 96. He recovers from a poor start. Will Howarth takes the overall victory. Sean Whittaker will cross the line for a brilliant victory in the standard class and second overall as well. Those two were so, so far ahead of everybody else. Brilliant, brilliant racing from all of them involved. But it's Will Howarth, he takes the overall victory. Sean Whitaker takes victory in the standard class. Team Acme Racing round up the overall podium. They were second in standard class. Harrison O'Keefe third, Ben O'Keefe fourth, Team Ernie Badger fifth, Madison Martley sixth, and Gary O'Keefe will cross the line in seventh place in the standard class. And Kieran Evans 
finished P9 in the end, but he'll still take home second place in the Open class. That is what Motor Team's all about. It's about going out and just having a fun race, having a fun ride. Of course, if you want to get involved, you can head over to the Fab Racing website and find all about uh, what you need to do. Will House decided that he doesn't want to go down to the correct holding area and he uh, doesn't want to uh, you know, celebrate with the, with the fans here at, um, at Lid, but that's perfectly fine. Of course, he'll get many more opportunities to do it across the rest of this weekend. Still two more races to come in Moto Team. What a really, really enjoyable race we've just had there. Of course, they'll be back tomorrow for race two and race three. Well, with the next race moments away, Extreme 200s, of course, we saw their second qualifying a few moments ago. Let's see how they're going to be able to get on for their first race of the weekend. Uh, past that, of course, then we've got the sidecars and the GP70s to round off the day of race ones. We've seen some fantastic racing up until this point. Let's see what the Extreme 200s can do. We'll run you through the grid order uh, as soon as we can. And then, once they've completed their site lap, once they've got themselves lined up on the grid, we'll have ourselves ready. We've got... A couple of legends on this grid in the form of Ethan Sparks, Marco Holt, Wilson Dilks up there as well. Huge competition, huge talent in this class and so many names that are already seeing themselves progress in the world of racing. Absolutely, I mean, as you just said, Ethan Sparks and Marco Holt on the front row. Fab racing royalty with Sparks on pole, Holt in P2. Wilson Dilks, he's in third place with Henry McCartney alongside. Third row of the grid made up by Blake Wilson and Harley Baker. Finley Paul, who was uh, in P6 Seven with David Ferns alongside Austin Johnson in ninth and Louis Smith rounds out our top 10. Jake Smith is 11th with Harry Payne in P12, Annabelle McCarthy 13th and Ollie O'Gorman in P14. Beth Ashby is in 15th place with Ashley Powell in 16th and Bradley Powell in P17. Uh, yeah, we're just getting ready to go racing in a few moments time and hopefully it is all going to get away well. I mean, Ethan Sparks and Mark Holt talk about Clash of the Titans. I mean, you've got your 2022 LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 champion and your 2023 uh, GP50 and uh, 70 champion. I mean, yeah, those guys, Sparks, of course, a back-to-back -back champion as well in 2021 and 2022. Uh, oh, just been told they're in. No, Ethan Sparks. Oh, Ethan Sparks has decided... Uh, is he walking away? We're going to try and see, but no Ethan Sparks. Not seeing Marco Holt out there either, actually. Uh, possibly a bike problem then for Ethan Sparks. Marco Holt has made it into second. But, oh, what a shame for the back-to-back -back champion, Ethan Sparks. Won't be starting from the pole. Looks like we've only got one uh, royal uh, legend on this grid then. You know, Marco Holt. Well, a real shame there from Ethan Sparks. Wasn't able to get underway. I did see out of the commentary box window. He still wasn't able to get out of the holding area immediately. So a real shame there for Ethan Sparks. Uh, you know, he's off racing in Europe this season. He's out under the tutelage of Grand Prix legend Chas Mortimer. But here at Fab Racing, he can still bite you uh, if when you least inspect it. So it will be Mark Holt from de facto pole position. Then no one lines up on the true pole. It is eyes to the lights. Race one of the Extreme 200s is on the way. Oh my goodness me, Henry McCartney almost loses it. Getting away from the line, sliding into the lead is what it looked like. Wilson Dilks got a monster start. Indeed, he did. Dilks leads from Holt in P2 and McCartney in P3. But my, oh my, that was almost a ginormous incident at the start. Great recovery from Henry McCartney to not end up tumbling off the bike before he'd even made it to turn one. That thing was not happy pulling away from the lights as we see some overtakes being made further down the field disappointing not to have Ethan Sparks out there as there we see Marco Holt already putting the pressure on and looks like he's already got back through actually has he Fine, no he hasn't actually Wilson Dilks has pulled out a monster gap already half a second Wilson Dilks leads from Marco Holt McCartney in third but Blake Wilson in fourth the, from second down to fourth is killed by three tenths of a second. You can see how close they are, Zach. This is awesome stuff on the opening lap. Nothing separating them whatsoever. It's important then that Wilson Dilks get away from this pack. He's got six tenths of a second and he doesn't want any part of this fight for second. He wants to get away. He wants the calmest race possible because sometimes the most boring races are the best ones, particularly when you're out in front. What a start that was from Wilson Dilks. Shot into the lead. 
And, uh, well, Mark Holt will be a bit disappointed with that one as he continues to put up the defence from the, uh, well, I'd say fast starting. I think the cannonball starting. Henry McCartney as the bike tried to launch him over the handlebars. It really was not happy with that one. And uh, just behind them as well, Blake Wilson in P8. But right now, there's still nine laps to go. Still a long way to go in this race. They're quite happy just uh, sitting and letting the race play out. It's early doors. Let's see who has the pace. See where you're fast and the rider in front as well if you're thinking about going on the attack. And then go from there. Wilson Dilk's fastest that last time. Out of 141. Uh, 41.435. Great lap time there. And uh, not horrendously far the lap record as that was McCartney having a look on hold. Just and able to quite make the gap appear that time. These three fighting for P2, neck and neck, can't fit anything between them. But it is still Wilson Dilks that leads the way even faster that time from Dilks. The pace getting quicker and quicker and quicker every single lap. We are now almost into the 40 second lap margins. These guys are flying a little bit wide there from Henry McCartney. That could open up a move potentially for Blake Wilson. Uh, but he decides to not try and launch a dive bomb and now McCartney got a great run out there there is your race leader Wilson Dilts currently fastest lap of the race 41.055 does he go any faster on this attempt he does a 41.034 behind him though those three fighting for P2 are so so close pushing it so so hard but it is still Holt from McCartney from Wilson second third and fourth Dilks still leads. Yeah, Dilks is, uh, of course, doing a brilliant job. Big step up from where he was last year, of course, on the GP70. Was able to take a victory, uh, as well as 10 podiums to his name on his pursuit to fifth place in the championship. Taking the step up, of course, uh, into the 200s amongst uh, an abundance of talent. Of course, that champion of that field there of Marco Holt, Blake Wilson as well, uh, as we've touched on in P2 and P4, looking very, very snazzy uh, in his pursuit, uh, of course, for victory, looking very, very nice. And now as we continue our run through this race, there's six laps left to go. Wilson Dilks one and a half seconds ahead, uh, of course, of Marco Holt, who himself is heading this train that we've touched on, two, three, and four. Marco Holt having to keep his wits about him, constantly looking around uh, there. Uh, also, as you can see, Ashby up in uh, P4 running really, really nicely as well. Big contender for, uh, uh, for representation in the motorcycle community, keeping themselves tucked up on that run towards the final corner, looking for a move to the inside. That 31 machine, of course, of Richard McCartney uh, for that second place spot ahead of Marco Holt, looking to maybe get himself up in the second place. Yeah, great stuff there from the um, from those three, still fighting hard coming through the chicane. Wilson Dilks now into the 40-second lap times of 40.940. 1.7 seconds is the gap that he's pulled up from, but with Marco Holt having to focus on defending behind lap record, still some way off of that. That's a 40.630 set by Charlie Nesbitt back in 2020. Uh, he also holds the other uh, pit bug on 40 lap record around here, set the same year, I'll bet the day before. So uh, Charlie Nesbitt was on form back then. Right now, though, it's Wilson Dilks who's on form, but these three are the ones that we're watching at the moment. Holt, McCartney and Ashby. Great, great racing action between all of them. Unfortunately, of course, we have we did lose Ethan Sparks out the start. Looks like we also lost Harley Barker, Jake Smith, and uh, yeah, very interesting stuff here from there. Oh, was that McCartney going up there? Yep, yeah, great stuff from Henry McCartney, putting on the pressure. But it is still Marker Holt leads in P2. Of course, big shame for... Uh, yeah, well, it's interesting to see how it's all going to unfold. We'll say that much. It's Dilks from Holt from McCartney from Wilson, your top four. Oh, trying to have a look now. Henry McCartney unable to make it happen into the final quarter as Dilks makes it three more tours of the late car racing circuit to go. And he's, well, surely not far away from tasting a victory here, presuming it all goes right and he keeps it on the black stuff. McCartney, though, really starting to put the pressure on Marco Hole here, Zach. He's suddenly just turned up the wick. He's decided now is the time to go. He is pushing hard. He is trying to put the pressure on to, of course, the legend of the paddock. He'll be racing uh, in the Mini GP British Championship. And oh. Write it down. 27. That's the 27. That's, That's Austin Johnson. That's had an off there. Big shame for Austin Johnson. That's uh, coming into the uh, second chicane. No, the first chicane, sorry. Uh, so Austin obviously just losing the front end of the bike somewhere, going down. A real shame for him. 
It is still Marco Holt that leads uh, the way with McCartney behind. Oh, traffic though for Marco Holt. This could potentially open a door. Oh, McCartney got held up even worse. Oh, and that could open the door behind as well. Oh, it's all drama here on the penultimate lap of the race here. Somehow, though, Marco Holt just about got away with that one. It looked like he was going to lose the position. But as we're coming on to the final lap, he's managed to establish himself in second. Yeah, he's done a brilliant job, Marco Holt. One lap left to go here at the car circuit. Wilson Dilks, of course, the 85 machine, will take one more tour of the circuit on his pursuit for victory. Not too many corners here at Lid, but many, many technical ones around there. He's negotiated them to perfection. Uh, of course, the fastest lap time set by him, a 40.940. Michael Holt was got close to that, just a hundredth back with a 40.950, but his consistency not enough really to contend. He's been under pressure uh, from Marco, uh, of course, from Henry Carney, Marco Holt under pressure from P2. But all eyes on this man right here, Wilson Dilks, taking the step up, the Extreme 200 race one of round one of the Fab Racing Extreme 200 Championship here at Lid. Wilson Dilks takes the checkered flag, takes the top step ahead of the reigning Mini GP 70 champion of Marco Holt. Henry McCartney completes the podium. What a race that was. Dominance from Dilks. I, I mean, I don't know if you can call it dominance. He led every lap, of course. Only 1.7 seconds ahead. That's all he needed. Well, there was a little bit of a look back there as he crossed the line, trying to be like, where was everyone else? Although it's, you know, not a massive, massive margin. No, no one even came close after the opening lap. You know, he just kind of settled into his rhythm, did his own thing. Wilson Dilks take us a fantastic victory in the opening race of the weekend. Marco Holt in P2 and Henry McCartney rounding out the podium. It will be Beth Ashby in P4 with Finley Polhill in P5. David Ferns in 6th. Jake Smith 7th, Louis Smith in 8th, Harry Payne in 9th, and Annabelle McCarthy. A great ride from her to round out the top 10. Holly O'Gorman was in P11 with Bradley Powell 12. Of course, you lost Austin Johnson, Ashley Powell, Ethan Sparks, Harley, and Harley Baker. That's a real shame there. But it was the number 8 bike in P4, but it's the number 85 of Wilson Dilks in P1. A great performance from him. And you can see the riders getting their photos from the fans in front of the boards. Brilliant, brilliant stuff there. In the opening race of the Extreme 200 Championship in 2024. Of course, two more races still to come for those guys tomorrow. Two more races still to come today. Yeah, we've got the sidecars and then, of course, the spotlight of Fab Racing. We've got the GP70 coming up in just a second, but what a race from these guys. Moments away from the opening race of the Mini F1 car psych, Mini F1 sidecar season here in 2024. The Green Streets sitting alone at the front, being being slowly joined as the 230 of Mark Pocket just creeps into the back of our picture. But of course, this is the one that, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. No Mick Williams and Mike Helms as they make their way out onto the grid. You know, the reigning sidecar champion for so ever many years. Um, so it could be interesting, you know, this is a big opportunity for the, uh, you know, the other teams to come through and get some points. It's the Green Streets on pole, Mark Parker alongside in P2. Chris and Robert Impey in P3, although uh, simply struggling to get the, uh, the sidecar going there in the pit lane. Hopefully they're able to make it out onto the circuit. Vince Bailey uh, starts in P4, Jamie Alexander in fifth, and Martin Hills in P6. I mean, we say the doors are open for some, you know, big moves. The Green Street's looking a lot faster than anyone else, to put it politely. But as the 457 of Chris and Robert Impey, oh, oh, that's such a shame if they're unable to get the sidecar going. We're well, hoping they'll be able to join us out on circuit, but as the uh, helmet potentially comes off. But even with the green streets looking so much faster than everyone else, you know, it's still a big opportunity to get a podium place here. It was, of course, trying to emulate what they did uh, this time last season at Lid. Of course, P3, uh, uh, of course, on the grid. Then P3 in race one uh, that time as well. But unfortunately, it seems that it's going to be a DNS. It did not start uh, for that 457 machine. The pole sitters, though, the Green Street's taking to that P1. And now, let's see what they can do. A golden opportunity and over three seconds quicker in quality. It's their race to lose. First time in nine years that Mick Williams has not started a Fab Racing Mini F1 sidecar race. It's 
been a long time without him on the podium. The MPs, you can see how the commentary box window is still trying to get the sidecar started in the pit lane, desperately trying to bump start it. But it might be too little too late. They might be having to start from the pit lane nonetheless. As wait, there is Martin Hills bringing it round. The sidecar's all sitting and waiting. You can see the passengers patiently awaiting with the driver's eyes firmly fixated on the flag marshal for the shoot up to the digital light board just a few feet ahead of them. It is time surely to go racing in 2024 for the Mini F1 sidecars. No Mick Williams in sight. Green Street on pole. MPs also with problems in the pit lane. Should we get this thing started then? It's the Mini F1 sidecars in 2024. It's lights out. We are underway. The Green Street, as always, get a phenomenal start. Get a phenomenal launch away from the lights. The uh, Mark Parker and Ems managed to slide into P2. The Vince Bailey holding on to that, well, net third place position after the MPs did it not make it out to the grid. But it will be the Green Streets looking to lay down an early gauntlet. They were so, so fast in qualifying. And they're hoping to continue that into the race as well. But it's Mark Parker from Vince Bailey in second and third. Jamie Alexander and Martin Hills rounding out our top five. Impies looks like are oh, conceding defeat. They're still desperately trying to get the thing going. But that is a look of Foss, well, the body language of frustration anyway that I see there from Chris, uh, the main driver. But leading the way on the opening lap, the Green Street already with a titanic lead. But it's close to a second, Mark Parker and Vince Bailey, the 2.30. And, or it's a Jamie Alexander apparently that stood up into third place on the number 11 machine. So that's just happened while we, uh, we weren't watching them. So Jamie Alexander on the 11s moved up. So, still movement about, and maybe a battle for second on our hands. Let's hope, uh, of course, because it doesn't seem there's going to be one for the lead. The Green Street's taking absolutely nothing away from them. They're leaving nothing on the table and showing their hand early doors, showcasing what they can do, of course, for the second half of last season in 2023, taking that fight to Williams of course didn't quite do enough to win the championship although it did go down right to the wire they're looking to kick start this championship campaign in fantastic fashion let's see if anyone else is going to close the gap as the season progresses but right now this fight for second place uh, we've got mark parker ahead of jamie alexander of course that fight between p2 and p3 let's see uh, who's going to be the one by the time they reach the first breaking zone of the lap a look to the outside and definitely defending is the 230 machine alexander uh, i think maybe trying to eye up the move in the near future but not quite close enough as of yet. He'll be analysing, he'll be looking for opportunities where he's quicker. As oh! oh my goodness me! Off the sidecar goes the passenger of the number 11 machine. We wait to see them re-enter the picture, yet they are still in the race. But goodness me, that was scary. Just lost grip on the sidecar for a moment. And wow, that is really, really scary. I mean, you've got to remember that, you know, these guys, they're not strapped in, they're hanging off the side of the bikes, you know, just using their weight to assist with cornering. And that could have potentially been a race end of that one. It certainly dropped them back in the back for second. Oh, well, as I said, actually, they're caught right back up already. So clearly a bit of waft on that number 11 thing. That thing looks quick in a straight line. And right now, the Green Street's absolutely dominating. Already 11.6 seconds in the lead. Fastest lap of a 49.152. Meanwhile, everyone else lapping in the 53s as it stands. But man, oh man, that was very, very scary for a moment. But glad to see that everyone is okay and able to keep competing. I mean, it's obviously surely a scary experience being a passenger in a sidecar as it is, let alone almost kind of falling off the damn thing. Yeah, well, I, uh, I always remember uh, Jack Tritton, uh, of course, uh, a sidecar passenger a few years ago. He now has success in their uh, British supercar, uh, of course. Uh, but back when he was a sidecar passenger, not killed, going into turn one, obviously, as the, the track dips down, just flew off the track. The, the camera panned away, panned back to him, and he was nowhere to be seen. Cut back, and he was rolling across the gravel for quite some time. It, these you know, these the, the, the sidecars are very, very quick, and those passengers, they gain a lot of momentum. As soon as they let go, it slips, and, and you're gone. They have so much courage, so much bravery to not only be on there, but also committing as much as they do. You can see basically hanging off his head millimeters away from the track surface, but that's what it takes to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these things, they're not slow. Obviously, you know, 
they're they're a little bit heavier than the other the other uh, you know machines that we see racing here at farm racing and obviously you know you've got an extra wheel you've got an extra passenger etc etc you've got you know that massive fairing that encapsulates the entire bike as well for aerodynamic stability but you know you can have 26 horsepower engines in these things but they they are very very quick in a straight line especially and they go around the corner you know they they are certainly quick um and it's uh yeah very scary to say the least as we wait for the uh, other riders to come through the corner the gap between the the leader and p2 20 seconds with three laps left to go the green streets are feeling dominant today but mark parker may be feeling the pressure a little bit from jamie alexander and the 11 machine because with three laps left to go, they seem really, really quick, especially down the back end of the circuit. That 11 seems to just fly down the back straight. But don't forget, if anything happens between the pair of these two, Vince Bailey and the 369 there as well to pounce for P2. Because Jamie Alexander, it's only his second season of sidecar racing. Great to see that sidecars continues to flourish here at Fab. And uh, oh, oh, is that maybe an issue here? Is that an issue maybe for Jamie Alexander? Oh yeah, it's... Jamie Alexander looking down uh, on the number 11 machine, maybe having an issue. As we see there, they're currently P3 and about to get overtaken. I think the number 11, it was all going so right, might all be going so wrong very quickly. As they come through the opening chicane, the 369 is right on their tail. And shake of the head from Jamie Alexander behind the handlebars. Vince Bailey is looking to make what should be a very easy overtake if these problems persist. Yeah, well, exactly. If there is an issue, maybe reduction in engine power or just a mistake, maybe. Hopefully they can recompose themselves, but there is the move. A little bit wide out of turn five. Having a bit of a look was Vince Bailey in that 3-6-9. Of course, the uh, red, black uh, and white leathers just in the background. One lap left to go. Of course, Green Streets will be taking what is a very, very dominant victory here for race one. Let's see what the fight's going to be, though, in this fight for third. It will be indeed one lap left to run this time by. And my oh my, the Green Streets are on a different planet right now. Currently 28 second lead they have. And you can see as third place has just crossed the line to start their final lap, the Green Streets have one corner to go to finish it. What a ride from Jason and Leo Green Street. With no Mick Williams, they carry on where they left off last season. Race one. The 2024 in the Mini F1 sidecars goes the way of the number 90 of Jason and Leo Green Street. And once again, they are laying down the gauntlet. They're saying we are not here to mess around. We want a challenge for the championship. We want to prove that we have what it takes to take this crown by the end of the year. Only time will tell, of course, whether you know, that statement is, you know, it's truly worthy, whether they do have what it takes. But right now, with no Mick Williams, they've been the class of the field. Mark Parker. On the 2.30, we'll bring it home to finish in P2. But Jason and Leo Greenstreet, what a performance they just had. Yeah, insane stuff. I mean, the pressure was on, and all eyes was uh, on to this category. No Mick Williams, of course, for the first time in nine years, the reigning champion. Green Streets, as the runners-up, of course, taking that fight late on in 2023, you'd expect them to step up. That's exactly what they've done. They had a couple of issues earlier on that sort of, you know, set them back a little bit, maybe put a bit of pressure on them, but... They were able to then step up. They were then able to deliver it. And it's not even like they won by a little bit. It's not like they even got pole by a little bit. They absolutely smashed it. Three and a half seconds in quali, 36 seconds in an eight-lap race. It's just incredible, isn't it? It shows the difference of the levels, uh, you know, here at Mini F1 Sidecar. It shows as well the work that the Green Streets continue to put in during the off-season. Incredible stuff from them. They'll be back tomorrow for race two and race three. It's the one we've all been waiting for. It is, of course, race one of the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. And boy, oh boy, the entire paddock is lining the circuit, getting ready for the first race of the year of Fab Racing's Premier Class. It was a tightly fought qualifying, but as the riders are ready to make their way out onto the circuit, it's anybody's guess as to who's going to be on top. Of course, no running champion on the grid. Marco Holt has moved on to bigger and better things. But you've got to say, you know, with the talent that we have on this grid, you know, Wilson Dilks on pole, Archer O'Brien in P2, 
Finley pole hill as well. It's going to be close, but Dilks and Archer O'Brien were the class of the field. Only riders in the 41s, in the mid 41s as well. I mean, then they're tenth of a second each other. It's super, super close between the pair. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Dilks versus O'Brien in that second qualifying session. What was it? Eight thousandths of a second that separated them. When you put that into perspective, that's that's nothing. And yet it's everything to those guys out on circuit. O'Brien, of course, taking pole position here last year, uh, of course, in the GP70s. He then went on uh, to, of course, take a podium uh, in race one, race two. It wasn't until race three that he was able to get a victory. He's going to be hoping to start this season off strong, get Dilks off the line. Let's hope he's been working on those starts like he was talking to us about. Yeah, of course, Archo Brian. It's uh, for a few years his starts have plagued him. You know, he has the pace in the race and definitely in qualifying. But whatever reason, you know, he'd start on pole position, come turn one, he'd be P4, and then he finished the race in P3 or P2. If he's been putting the work in on those starts like he told us he has, then he will be a formidable force for Wilson Dilks to deal with. Got to also look at the likes of Harry Payne, Jensen Bishop running up P4 and P5, Sam Garner in sixth, Harrison Day seventh, Byron Johnson eighth, Hamish McIntosh in P. P9, Beth Ashby in 10th, and George Ackerman in P11 with Finley Pole Hill in third place. A very, very strong grid. And the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. 11 riders make our grid today. 11 of the finest young riders that the British Isles have to offer. And they're about to go racing here in 2024. Of course, this is the championship they all want to win. This is the championship that we all want to watch. This is the pathway, this is the gateway into the RNG British Talent Cup and a motorcycle racing career. And 2024, we're about to get going. Who has what it takes to take it all the way in this race? It is time to get ready. A small delay here, but we're ready to go racing. In 2024, in the 70s, it's all ice to the lights. It's lights out, we are underway. It's an okay start from Archo Prime, but a great start from Wilson Dilks from the pole position. Finley Polehill manages to hold on to third place, but it's all the status quo on the run down into the second chicane. Dilks from O'Brien from Polehill. Your top three further back moves being made. Look like Hamus McIntosh may have got a place or two away from the line. Great start from Harry Payne as well to hold off Jensen Bishop on that 9-1-1 machine. But currently it is Wilson Dilks, your pole sitter, who leads on this opening lap as the run onto the back stretch begins as they all tuck in, trying to get in the slipstream of the bike in front. O'Brien looking decently close enough at the end of that first lap. It was a strong enough start, but Dilks was just like a rocket ship when the lights went out. He leads here on lap one, 11 laps to go. It's Dilks from O'Brien from Polehill, your top three. Important stuff from both of the leaders, it must be said. I mean, Archie O'Brien, he didn't lose off the start. Granted, he didn't gain, but more importantly, he didn't go backwards and that gives him a great stepping stone as this race develops to really go and attack Dilt, who himself as we touched on great start in order to command this race early doors this is the fight for P4 that's Harry Payne versus Jensen Bishop uh, fourth and fifth running their way through that final chicane Wilson Dilks though commanding this race lead a quarter of a second off Arshio O'Brien, of course uh, both of them competing at the top level both in the GP50s and the GP70s so look half look to the outside actually from that 911 machine of Bishop who tried to go to the outside of the final corner it is the 11 of Harry Payne though that retains in fourth all of these guys though very very close they are indeed a big fight for the lead Dilks O'Brien and Pole Hill all covered by just one and a half seconds of the line we see here Harry Payne and Jensen Bishop obviously neck and neck couldn't fit a razor blade between them as they come onto the back stretch of the circuit this is where the money's made this is where you've got to keep your speed up and then try for a late lunge into the final term can Jensen Bishop make anything over this lap? Because it looks like Harry Payne may have just made a small mistake into the left-hander, but he's far enough in front to hold on to that position. Oh my goodness me, that was laid on the brakes, Jensen Bishop. I tell you what, I didn't think he was going to go for it from that far back, but he gave it a go. My goodness me, that was brave. And now, now the gap has closed right up. Really, really impressive attempt there from Jensen Bishop. But Harry Payne just hitting his marks, putting the bike where he needs to. Nine laps left to run. Jensen Bishop still looking for a way through. Fastest lap so far, Wilson Dilks, 41.352 last time out. Running really, really quickly there. And he's now a second to the good from Arch O'Brien in P2 as well. Look at how close these guys are. Surely this time Jensen Bishop's going to try and find a way through. So, oh, he had to sit the bike up. 
He had to set the bike up. Great defending there from Harry Payne. Just tipped it to the inside a bit early. And that threw off Jensen Bishop's rhythm. Just threw off the, the, where he was trying to go. And he had to back out of that one. So with eight laps left to go, it is Dilks from O'Brien, from Polehill, from Payne, from Bishop, your top five. Yeah, nice start. Of, of course, great defence from Harry Payne. Jensen Bishop doing enough, though. Very, very late on the brakes. Talking to Arch O'Brien, there are actually a number of different braking stars uh, between these bikes. Uh, and uh, it all depends really on, obviously, their front suspension, how stiff it is, how much uh, compression they want under the braking zones. Maybe Bishop has a much more sharper front end, enabling him to be a bit more direct on that brake paddle uh, going into that final corner might be something to consider because he is very brave very committed on the brakes and that might be how he finds his way past harry payne uh, here is our race leader uh, by the way the 85 machine uh, of course wilson dilks commanding this race three quarters of a second clear of archie o'brien who's got pace but at best, it's, it's staying the same. He needs a little bit more in order to just chip away at that gap over the course uh, of the final seven laps. Well, on that last lap, Wilson Dilks, I think, made a little mistake. Archer O'Brien managed to you know, chip a couple of tenths into him. Finley Polehill made a big mistake. He was eight tenths off of Archer O'Brien's lap that last time out. And the gap between the pair of them now, 2.8 seconds, as we come to the line. Once again, looking at battles further back in the pack. Here we see, uh, that is once again, Harry Page. Jensen Bishop. Oh, and Jensen Bishop actually has got through Harry Payne, it would appear. So, great stuff from them. Once again, looks like Wilson Dilks has made another mistake because now the gap is just half a second between Wilson Dilks and Archer O'Brien. So, maybe Dilks feeling a little bit of the pressure. Maybe he's got a problem. Maybe he started to run out of tyres after a long, warm day of just hounding in the laps. We're not entirely sure. Whatever it is, over the last few laps, Arch O'Brien has had the pace between the pair of them. And look at that, coming out of the final corner once again, Arch O'Brien. Although that lap wasn't as impressive as his previous one, he's still chipping away at that lead of Dilks. Yeah, I mean, every little helps. Chipping away, getting closer and closer. It's more and more pressure. And of course, as we touched on with the shadows and the noise, the closer he gets, the louder he gets. The closer he gets, the more prominent his shadow is. So anytime Dilks makes any move, in his peripheral vision, he can see that 91 machine closing and closing uh, on his tail. So maybe we can still see a uh, fight quality between the pair of them. Of course, one winner piece, uh, of course, over the course of 2023, which means they both are vying for, uh, uh, well, to match their, uh, of course, tally of 2023 already in 2024. Both of them want to kick uh, out the gates very, very strong. Only one of them can. Four laps left to go. Who's going to be the one to come to the pressure? I think that's going to be the decider. Who blinks first? Well, if they keep the pace that they're doing at the moment, because Archer O'Brien has just slowed off a little bit now that he's in the wake of Wilson Dilks, uh, O'Brien will essentially be on top of Dilks as they hit the chequered flag. Uh, but of course, you know, he's got to get through first. O'Brien, you know, he's getting closer and closer and closer. Right now, he's definitely got the pace. Look how close he is now. It's four tenths of a second at the line last time. Visually, it's a lot closer this time. Into the final turn we go. It's going to be three laps to go this time. Is Archer O'Brien close enough down into turn one? Just one and a half tenths separating the pair of them. Now we have a race for the lead on our hands. The 85 of Wilson Dilks versus the 91 of Archie O'Brien who's going to be on the top step of the podium at the end of this race well we've got two and a half laps left to run and right now Archie O'Brien is looking quick yeah he is the one in control I think probably using some of that spider sense from his helmet just to creep in and close in uh, on Wilson Dilks try and put a little bit of pressure on him he needs to try and spot a move though does Archie O'Brien maybe just show his nose and put a little bit of pressure on two laps left to go penultimate lap of the race he thinks three terms is the gap to go for the move already putting Dilks under pressure forcing him to go defensive that tells me O'Brien's in his head and taking control of this race on that last lap Archer O'Brien was you know, hundreds faster there's now really nothing between them uh, Archer O'Brien oh we got some traffic ahead of the leaders oh this could really really delay Wilson Dilks Archer O'Brien might have to go the long way around to the inside Dilks looks like he just got away with it O'Brien was held up as well but not as much but Wilson Dilks, lucky, lucky boy, count your stars, one turn to go, and then it is the final lap here in Lid.
Yeah, it is. Rounding their way through the final corner. Archie O'Brien liking to that more geometric racing line, keeping that minimum speed up, and that is assisting him in hammering the pressure on. One more tour here of Lid. Each braking zone that goes past is one less time that Dilks needs to defend, and also one less opportunity for Archie O'Brien to go for the move. The desperation, the adrenaline is going to be soaring through the roof. Half a lap left to go. Who's going to take uh, the race victory of the Mini GP70s? And now into the final chicane, Archie O'Brien putting that pressure on. Is he going to be able to go for the lead? He needs a good run out of this final right-hander towards the final corner. Is he close enough for a send or is Wilson Dilks going to take victory here for the LS2 Mini GP70 race? Round number one, race one from pole position goes the way of Wilson Dilks. Sensationally done, maturely rose. Dealing with the pressure brilliantly from Archie O'Brien, who was close. Great camaraderie shown between the pair of them. Great sportsmanships. And, well, a tenth and a half less than that between the pair of them across the line. Man, oh, man, oh, man. What a race we have just been treated to here in the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 Championship. Dilks looked like he had it all under wraps and Archie O'Brien started flying. But it wasn't enough. It's still two takes the win. O'Brien in P2, Finley Polehill in P3, Jensen Bishop in P4, with Sam Garner in P5, Harry Payne in P6. Unfortunately, dropped a few places there at the end. Did the number 11. Harrison Day, though, finished in P7 with Byron Johnson in 8, Hamish McIntyre in 9, George Ackman rounding out on top 10, and Beth Ashby, the last, but definitely not the least of our runners, in P11. What a race, though! Not just to start the season, of course, for the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship, but to end the race ones, end Saturday's action as well. Absolutely fantastic stuff as the podium finishes get applauded by their colleagues. Wilson Tilks can, I think, take a sigh of relief off that one because a few more laps, I think Archie would have done it. Who, who knows? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. All that matters right now. Round one, race one, P1 for Wilson Dilks. He absolutely smashed that. Archie O'Brien, he was close, and he probably is going to be gutted that he didn't go for it because at that point, you know, it's P1 or nothing, right? It doesn't matter. It's like, oh, you got P2, but I wanted P1. I wanted the win. He's not going to be happy with that, and he's going to be ever more motivated to go for it tomorrow. Indeed, he will be. Archie O'Brien will have the drive, will have the want, he'll have the need because Wilson Dilks has already secured that first one of the year, even though it's only been one race so far. Archie O'Brien... He wanted it. You could tell at the end he was pushing so, so hard, but just didn't quite come to fruition. But Wilson Dilks takes the win in race one of the LS2 Helmets Mini, G Mini GP2. The LS2 Helmets Mini GP70. Close British enough. Long day. There we go. It's been a long day. But here we are then. That is the end of Saturday's action. The end of race one action here at the opening round of the 2024 Fab Racing Minibike British Championship season. Of course, Zach, we've got plenty more racing to come tomorrow. 20 race two and threes to look forward to across all the classes. But that was a great way to kickstart the season. An afternoon chock-a-block full of brilliant racing and brilliant action. Exactly that. I think we couldn't really have asked for much more. So much action crammed into really not a lot of time. The qualifying, incredibly close. The season that we now get to look forward to as we travel away around the country. So much talent, so many names. And this is right now, this sort of start of this season, a season like this with talent like this, is where you look in five, ten years' time, where you're looking back on a rider's career and you think, where did they start? And it's races like this that can define careers sometimes. Sensational stuff. Bring on race two and three. Well, that's what tomorrow brings. Thank you very much for joining us for the opening day of the season here at Fab Racing. It's been a great day of sport all around. Of course, you know, there's been football across the country, the Masters in the America, the Grand National, but this is where we are. We're here at Fab. This is the one you need to be watching. And of course, we'll be back tomorrow in the morning for some race two and race three action. So make sure you're tuning in and we'll see you there.